This should be this your boy N O R E. What up is DJ E F N and this drink chance motherfucker Yappy Hour. Make, Make some noise. noise. When I tell you this man is a legend, when I tell you real talk, until I was probably 25, the only tapes I used to fuck to was kicker pre tapes, slow jams, the mixtapes. I'm so proud, I'm so sorry. You know, I didn't have time to get individual CD out, get kicker pre slow jams, you smash, and it's just how it happens. Uh, I used to go uptown and get his tapes from Queens. I used to hop. I used to get in a, a, a national cab. I, of course, I didn't have a car. But back then, they used to have OJs and things like that. I used to go from Queens all the way uptown to get this man's tapes. He's a legend amongst legends. He Absolutely. just finished up Versus. We're going to talk about that. He just got an album out. We're going to talk about that. Mm. Wrote and produced everything from him. But when I tell you, can't nobody rock a party like a kick a pre party because a kick a pre party don't stop. I've seen him play for the youngins. I've seen them play for the middle people. I've seen them play for the old heads. I've seen them play for the Latinos. I've seen them play for the white people. I've seen them play for the... I've seen them play for Martians. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this man play for anybody and rock the crowd the same. So in case you don't know who the fuck we talking about, we're talking about the one, the only, legendary, DJ hey! motherfucking King! <laughs> Chance alumni. Yes, sir, yeah. I am. I How am. happy was you when you seen Trick Daddy admitting that he posed his legs up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the attention off of me. <laughs> Thank you, Trick. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Trick. 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 <laughs> I kind of put the shock in his head when I showed him this film, man. Right, right, yes, 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 yes. It was yes, way yes. early. It was way early, yes. He was just getting his bones, you know. Yes, yes, he, yes, he's yes. a sucker free shirt. Yes, for yes. Okay, I, hell yeah, hell okay. yeah. Give him to y'all later. So, kid, um, let's move on. Let's get straight into it. Yep. The hip-hop community, the first time I actually seen the hip-hop community um, come together recently, mm -hmm. and this was like, this, this was a whole bunch of secret group chats, and everybody was like really, really concerned about you, mm -hmm. and they were really, really concerned about um, K Slay. Because mm -hmm. um, they said at one point, like you guys had, you had, you had the bad version of COVID, right? So mm -hmm. explain to people who haven't had COVID um, how, how, does, how, how does this work? Well, the first time I had it was when it first started. Oh, you had it first? Yeah, I had it twice. Did I you had the vaccine? I, uh, no. Okay, no, cool. No, no. But the first time I caught it was March 2020 when it first started. I had to do a show with KRS One at Sony Hall in New so York. Was it because KRS gave you COVID? <laughs> no, no, I didn't fucking do that. I didn't fucking do that. I didn't. Matter of fact, it was the last concert that New York had seen when the COVID started. Mm. And uh, we did uh, uh, Howard Theater the next night in DC. When I got mm. on the airplane, seen all these wipes on the plane, it was like, damn, that's peculiar. I started wiping off my little area when I got home oh, that night. this when it first started, you said? This when okay. the very first okay. started. Right. And I wiped off, this, off my little area when I got home that right. night. Man, I was sick for a week and a half. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't uh. drink. I couldn't eat. It was really bad. And it was, um, it, you know, I understand why people died from it, man. It was it was horrible. Fred the Godson was sitting in my, in my studio, Fresh and a month later, he was dead. You know what wow. I'm saying? It was crazy, man. So, you know, um, when I caught it this time, I had did a show, which I was going to cancel. I had canceled a bunch of shows, and I didn't cancel this one because there was a lot of bread involved, so I said, let me go get it. 
But um, it was New Year's Eve. I did Houston. I did another show in Houston the next day. And when I got home that following day, that's when I got sick and I put the video out. And had I thought about the, all the attention that it would that it was going to get, I would have never put the video out. Is this the first time you had got it, or is it second no, this time? the second, the second time? time. This is the second time. Okay. Recent time. Okay. Um, so when I put, like I said, when I put the video out, had I thought about all the attention that it would have gotten, I probably would have put it, put it out if I would have thought twice. But, but I'm but glad I did because it, it woke people up to, to, why, to understand. Don't trust nobody. It's serious right. out here. But why would you regret that? I don't understand. Because you know, sometimes when you do things, I'm, I'm not a dude that you know. I watch people get caught up in the, in the camera. And want to be on the camera just for the sake of the you know, of them having a camera in their face, and they just want a certain amount of attention. Thanks, I'm man. not really into that. When I show things on the net or whatever, it's, it's to inspire you, it's to show you I'm doing good, it's to make you want to do good, and you know stuff like that. So I, you know, sometimes you know you put things up there. It's like you know like, why you had to do that. So, I, but then again, I thought about it. It was like it's a good thing I did put, no, put it out there. Thing. You know, what I'm saying a- so people will wake up and know that it's, it's serious, man. It, right. Hit me and um. You know, I was. I, it was bad, man. It was bad to the point where I ain't want to do no dates. I, sh- I canceled all my shows, and you know, and matter of fact, when I when I canceled when, when uh, the the pandemic happened and everybody started going back to do shows again, they was trying to get me to come back out. I didn't take none. Of that. I ain't go back out until last year, mm. and I was only taking certain dates, certain shows, certain size buildings, and stuff like that. So yeah. Because for the most part, it, it did seem like at one point the DJs were seeming immune, meaning like there was still DJs going out and partying. They was wearing their mask on, mm-hmm. kind of social distancing, but still going to the parties. I mm-hmm. remember seeing Camillo and a couple of them. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing Envy and a couple of them. And um, so almost, almost thought like the DJs is immune <laughs> at one point. And then, um, then you and K. Slade get sick around the same time. Yeah. Have you and K. Slade spoke? I spoke to K. Slade when it first happened. And... Um you know, because uh, you wasn't hospitalized, was you? No, I, I wasn't hospitalized. Okay, but he was, but he, he was, and um, and uh, yeah, I spoke to K. Slay a, f- a few times, and then I started speaking with his mom's, going back and forth with his mom, making sure he was okay. Um, I haven't heard anything lately, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I'm, I'm sure he's getting better. You know, right. our hearts was with him. That's my boy. That's, you know, that's, that's all of our do is K. Slay. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So that's we wanted right. to be good. You know, big up K. Slay. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get you we're gonna get you right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This yeah. is drink chance, god damn it. Need that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He drink what you drinking? Said best side, man. <laughs> he's always that. drinking the, the stuff something away from y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all you know your DJs, y'all gotta be different. <laughs> salud, salud. Salud, salud, salud. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. So again. You have no idea how you, 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 you got it, right? Like, when you got it, you have no idea how you got it. We know how we got it here. What? Well, I didn't get it. Yeah. You didn't get it that time? No, that was all y'all have for the The crew. first time we, we came back after, was here, right? after quarantine, <laughs> and we taped our first episode, six of us caught it on set. No, but it was all six that was drinking beer. And they went to the same place. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We do think that we got it from the local <laughs> spot, oh, and it was Presidente beer, by the way. They make you a I no, no, but it wasn't good. It was wow. just a spot. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, wow. we six of us that drank those beers got it. Wow, that's that's crazy. So now moving on. New, you ever thought New York City would be legalized marijuana? I knew at some point. I didn't think, like, initially. But I knew once I seen, when I went to Denver, I seen L.A., I seen certain places that did have it. I knew at some point it was going to come to New York. It was going to come, you know. I thought it was going to come faster. I thought it would come before a lot of other places. Right. But, it, you know, it happened, mm. you know. And the crazy shit, traveling on the plane with it. Yeah, I just came back with a, a, a half a pound. You, <laughs> you're always snitching on yourself. <laughs> Split it up. Half sunny bag, half roster bag, half my bag. <laughs> look, 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 I'm not telling you. It's got dead. <laughs> hey man, but in LAX they don't even they it's a rule, they don't even search your bag for that. Is that right? That's fire, right? That's Nori's rule. Search, no. Hey, I've seen some no, dude so get his bag searched in the airport, they found the weed, looked at it, put it back in the bag. Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what are they gonna do? All right. All right. Bigger they fish to fry. That. Yeah, yeah, for so, sure. So imagine this. Think about this. All the dudes is locked up in jail for 20-something years, and now the shit is legal. Mm. Crazy. And he did all that time. You know what yep. I'm saying? Think about that. I was just on a conference call talking about that just now. I swear to God. That's crazy. I'm um, talking about a comedy show about dudes that's in jail, that's hating, 
Oh, well, <laughs> man, I don't fuck that. <laughs> they out front. They hate on the twos. It's a comedy show, so please, and nobody with this real life thing is serious. What? We're making it all up, but it's true. Like, how the fuck? All these motherfuckers is locked up. That's something to be mad at. So let me ask you something. You've been on the road with KRS. Mm -hmm. You've been on the road with. Say, name some of the rappers you've been on the road with. Well, I've been on the road for myself. Long time. You haven't you stopped. Clearly, 25 you, you tours. Haven't stopped, man. You was Never clearly stopped. the first DJ I ever seen with a tour bus. Mm -hmm. yeah, is, is, that, is that not the truth? It's first dude in hip hop. Are we supposed, to make, are one. We, are we supposed to make some noise for that? Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. 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 Make some noise more because I had two tour buses. I bought my first one, which was a 40 foot. Matter of fact, when I went to go buy my first bus, the dude that was buying the bus from me laughed at me. He was like, yo, nobody buys buses. Right. They, they rent they the bus. Them. The album comes out. They rent the bus, go on tour for a couple of months. They right. bring the bus back, done deal. Nobody right. buys a bus. Right. I said, man, I gave him a whole bag of money here. Give him my bus. Mm. Gave him my bus. I came back and bought a bigger bus. Mm. Right. When I bought that bigger bus, he seen how serious I was, and plus I gave him some of his best bus drivers. I drove for Lil Wayne, drove for mm. Cash Money, drove for, you know, this one, Snoop. CeeLo, the bus driver? CeeLo was okay. one of my okay. bus drivers. Okay. Rest in peace, CeeLo. Rest in peace. Um, when I came back, to, when, when, when I came back to get the second bus, he was like, yo, you, you doing a record company? I was like, yeah, I'm going to give you a million dollars for your record company. I was like, nah, I'm good. Hold it. Keep, he gonna keep give you that. He was going to give me a million dollars for my record company, to, to, to back my record company. Oh, or the guy who owned the tour the, bus company. Yeah, but I told him nah, I'm wow. Wow. Yeah. That's how much he believed in what you were doing because you were exactly. coming in. Is that because he never seen nobody buy a bus from him right. before? This dude got 350 buses on his lawn. This dude lives on 2,000 acres of land. Him and his buddy got an airport in his crib. Let's be like, clear. You said he never seen nobody or he never seen he nobody, never seen black, nobody buy black or no, 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 nobody nope. ever bought they a bus. They just rented. And that's like, how, how much was this at this time? The buses, so he got buses of $2.3 million on, on his lawn lined up. Yeah, you know, mine right. wasn't that much. I think mine was probably, probably 1.3, maybe. No, I'm lying. I'm lying. Mine was about seven fifty right. at the time, right. but he had one point three prevos and two point three prevos was laid out, and he would fix the buses right there in his lawn. He had all is these the ones with the beds, right? Yes. Okay. And he would have all these different houses that he would build and put people that worked for him in these houses, and mostly everybody that worked for him was black. And how he started it was he was a um. I mean, his brother started this band, this group, in 1960, and they made this record, and the record went top 40. Mm. But they didn't like to fly, so what they did was they bought a school bus, and they gutted the school bus out, they put a couch in there, put a uh, chairs in there, you know, and they made it comfortable, and they went on the road. Mm. After the record died down, they rented the bus out, and they seen mm. all this money that they were making from the bus, so they went and bought another one. Then they bought another one. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, each brother owned 350 buses apiece, and these mm. buses is $2.3 million. So they invented the tour bus? I wouldn't say they invented it. I wouldn't know that, but right, I know right. that they didn't like to travel. Right, right. You know what I'm and saying? these guys was in Jersey? In the plant. No, no this is the, the, where they have the, uh, the, one of the ranches is in Leesburg, Leesburg, Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. where all the buses come from, I thought. Came that's from him. Wow. That's the one that owns the bus. That was company. a black person? That's, no, he's white. Calhoun. Oh, okay. oh, okay. His last name is Calhoun, but he, uh, most of the people that work for him is black. I remember one dude that, that uh, he said, yo, I'm going to pick up my girl. He said, you want to come with me? I was like, nah, I'm good. He got in the airplane, left, came back 20 minutes with his girl. It was crazy. <laughs> Pulled up with the plane. Everybody got a house right. and got a plane in their garage with a, either a Benz or something crazy in front right. of the house. They building houses on the ranch. On the this dude got 30 swamp boats. Right. He, he lives crazy. Man, I never seen see nobody live like this. His brother has the exact same thing that he has. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. So um, when you travel with KRS, did you travel on boat? Nah, nah, nah. I, I, I didn't really travel with KRS. I just did certain shows with KRS. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We okay. do like spot dates. Like I'll do shows. I, 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 matter of fact, I travel more with Rock Kim than I do with KRS. Cause me and Rock Kim, Kim did a whole tour together. Wow. Yeah, we did a whole tour. So, I, uh, but me and KRS did so much monumental things. Right. You know what I'm saying? And also, KRS was there when my daughter Vina Love was born. He's the godfather wow. of Vina wow. Love. You know what I'm wow. saying? Uh, he was there at the hospital. I was in town. I was down here in Florida doing right. a show in Tampa. When she was born and he was at the hospital, it was crazy, right. man. But um, so, like I said, I have so much history with so many people. But most, mostly, I've been on the road for myself, right. and it's a pleasure to know that you know what I'm saying I could sell out a spot mm -hmm. and you know make a crowd happy and don't have to depend on if I need somebody else there. If somebody else there, it's, it's right. a plus. But I could do it on my own, and it's dope. But after doing verses yourself and after being on the road with Rakim, mm -hmm. who do you think Rakim would best do a verses against? Me and Swiss sat down many times to talk about different people to match up. I mean, we sat down on the phone one time for three hours trying to get somebody to match up with LL. Couldn't find nobody. But the first time I first started was Swiss had called me and asked Can't be me. Buster. 
Well, Buster didn't come in mind. It wasn't mm -hmm. Buster that we was thinking of. No, as a matter of fact, I'm lying. Buster did come up. But when um, how it first started, Swiss had reached out to me and asked me if I'd get Rakim with Kane. Mm, that, I mean, that seemed like the more. No, I don't know. I don't. That didn't, doesn't seem like a good match. Right? Yeah. To me, our argument used, used to be on the block: KRS and Rakim. It was always that. It was never KRS and Kane or Rakim and Kane, even though Kane was out, just outrageous to us. Right, but it was right. all, the argument was always KRS and Rakim. Right. right. But you know, when I reached out to Rod, I told him, I, you know, say I told him why I thought he should do it. But you know, Rod, Rod moves the way he gonna move, man. Right. He don't move like you know what I'm saying. And um, sometimes something that's good may not be good for you. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like I was asked to do verses four times. From on four your own? Or, or, no, not on my own. Okay. To help other people, and okay. I turned it down because oh, I didn't wow. feel like it was the right thing for me to do at the time. Sometimes people jump on something because the opportunity is there or because it's the hot thing to do and it may not be the right thing to do at the right at that time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I did it with KRS and Kane, that made sense. Right. You know, and I told them no at first. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um who, who was people was when you told no at first? It was somebody else. Um I think Keith Sweat had reached out and wanted me to do it, which I I love Keith Sweat, is one of the greatest. But I just didn't see sense in me standing behind Keith Sweat while he's crooning, crooning. Uh, what am I going to do? Like, I'm gonna stay, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. Like, somebody else might have took that. I'm not knocking that, but it wouldn't have been right for, for me. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have been able to be yourself in that situation. Like, I can't be me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, it just don't make sense. It looked like I'm just a token dude standing there. Right. Like, I, you know, that's not what I do. You do play Kick Capri after dark. What is it? What is it? Uh, uh, no Panty no Sunday. No Panty Sunday. That okay. was my little... What happened yeah. was, I started playing on... Before all this thing with the with the the quarantine happened, I was playing on IG Periscope and Facebook Live from 2015 to 2018. And what I would do is I would sit there and play. What I, how I started, I started I, in my crib. I played beats and stuff like that. So one day I was in the crib. I was like, Yo, I was bored as hell. One day I just said, Yo, cut the camera on. I cut the camera yeah. on, and people just like the beats they were hearing. Right. And I see all these chicks on there. Right. So I did it again. So I created a show called The Block Party Live Mixtape where I just mm. played crazy craziness, mm. right? But I'm, it's not me DJing, it's just me playing on the computer, just hitting the button. Mm. Joints coming all the time. And it worked, me talking my shit and doing what I do. So I see all these women up there. One day I said, you know, I gotta create a show for the women. I said, what y'all think? And one woman said, we should name it No Pants Sundays. I said, nah, we gonna call it No Panty Sundays. Uh, Bang. Uh, that Sunday I did the first <laughs> show. I had maybe 60,000 women up there looking at this thing. So every Sunday, I would do No Panty Sundays. Every Wednesday, I would do Block Party Live mixtape. Never asked for a dollar. Never asked for... This is on people. live or this, this is... This is me in my, my basement doing it live in front right. of, you know, and... But it's it, on IG Live, I'm This saying. is on IG okay, Live. Yes. This is on... Per it started on Periscope lives. first. Then I started going to IG Live and Periscope. Then I added Facebook Live and I had all three cameras set up. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this from 2015 to 2018. When 2018 ran around, Sirius seen what I was doing on there. Mm. And, you know, I wouldn't go back to regular radio because I feel like I couldn't be me at regular radio. Mm. No no knocking it. It's just that, for me, I need Where to just have some content. You was on Power 105? Man, I was on no, 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 no. I've never been on hot, hot, never been on Power. They had, hot asked me years ago to okay. be on there. But you but filled I was in on the a road. couple of I'm times. I'm on the road. I was trying to, you know, be on the road and do my thing. You filled thing. in a couple of times, though, Yeah, right? I did. Okay, I, okay, okay, I, yeah, I can tell your story, yeah. Yeah, so... um. They came to Sirius seeing what I was doing, saying how hot the shit was. It was like, yo, come to Sirius, do your, do your thing, do your block party thing, you know. That's something called the block party, and uh, I do the first four hours where I played early 90s and 2000s, and at the last two hours, I play everything new and old and mix it up. And that's how I seen radio. I seen radio as it shouldn't be a thing where it's, it's the same thing all the time. It should be colors to it. It should be things right. where you don't expect. So it worked out. I've been doing it for five years. And uh, it's dope when I can play my own music on my joint and, and you know, there's no limitations. I can just do what I feel. And, um, you know, it, 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 so with that, that happened. The Kendrick Lamar album came that, that year. Right. Uh, the Tupac movie came that year. A uh, few other things. But this all came from me sitting there doing the thing on, on, um, on the, on the, uh, in my basement right. on the net. So after 2018, I stopped because I wanted to drive everybody to Sirius. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, yeah, but it worked out. It was dope. And well, then the quarantine hit, and I came back for a little while. But that's that. That was that was actually an ill thing too. Because when I heard the Kendrick Lamar album, and got to hear you on it, mm -hmm. and I was like, damn, like you know, for him to 
a West Coast lyrical guy to big mm-hmm. up an East Coast, you know, a, a DJ, you would think that he would shout out like Felly Fell or like, you know what I'm saying? Bat- I said that to him. Battle- I said to him, really, I said, yo, really? you, you got Battle Cat right. out there, you have DJ Cool out there. The Why you didn't get them? These dudes are legends. Like, you know, he was like, no, they're my boys, they're my brothers, they, they're who they are. But I know what you did for the music business. I know what you did for the DJs. Wow. I know what you did, how you changed the game in the music business. And if, if people this is ain't Kendrick gonna, telling you this that. This is Kendrick telling me this. We're in the studio. Right. Wow. He's saying, you know, if people ain't going to give you the credit that you deserve, this right here will. You know what I'm saying? Let's make some noise for Kendrick. Yeah. <laughs> and although I wish I could have, um, I'm so happy that, you know, when it's the only album in hip hop that made it to get a Pulitzer Award. So mm-hmm. he put me in That's places right. that, right. my voice in places that I've never been to. Right. And I've been a lot of places, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. So um, just Please. that alone, you know, he put me in, in the face of young kids that might not have ever had the Kick Capri experience and don't really know what I do. He had a chance for them, it gave him a chance to go back and see, you know, why would Kick Capri be on Kendrick album? And they'll go back and check and see, you know what I'm saying? So I wish we could have did a lot more like concerts and stuff together. He didn't need right. me, of course, right. you know. Right. But if we would have did it, it would have right. been tsunami. We would have been crazy. But right. maybe one day we would. It could still, yeah, it could still right. happen. Yeah, you know. Right. Well, kid, we don't know if you know our show is about giving people their flowers. All right, we want to give I'm you a big flowers. fan. You know what I'm saying? Right now, in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Give your motherfucking flowers, bro. Okay. You are one of those. Yeah, we didn't give them to you last time, but this yeah. time they're okay, here for real you. Flowers. Yeah. 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 real flowers. Yeah, real flowers. Not smoking flowers. Yeah, yeah. These last. That's dope. Like your career, they're going to last. That's dope. That's my stuff. That's it. That's dope. Thank you. So Look at that. Let me ask you. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Make sure we get back to verses. Make sure we get back to verses. But, kid, I see you in parties, and... I see you still switching. I see you still, like, you still enjoy this. Or am I reading this wrong? No, I love it. Okay. Because I did it when there was no mu- when there was no money, when there was right. no attention, when there was no right. gas. It was none of that shit. It was like, you know what I'm saying? We did it just, we, yo, I used to come out with the equipment in the rain out in the street just so people could see me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When I got on, I sat on the street corner of mm. 155th in front of Rucker or 145th and 8th in front of Willie's and sold mixtapes, not knowing I was going to get shot, robbed, it's all kind of shit. This is in the middle of Harlem. Yeah. There was a lot of shit going on, yeah. killings going on. Still going on. It was on. real. And when I was in the SNS club, I was with the, the most craziest people that you could imagine in New York. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't do the things that certain people did. So the way I moved made them dudes look at me in a certain kind of way and, and, and protect us. Right. Me and Star Child, you know what I'm saying? Right. So when I came in that street with the, with the with the tapes, I was already solidified in Harlem, but I wasn't I wasn't really nobody yet. Dudes was coming up like, yo, why would I buy a tape from you for $20? Man, who are you? Right. Kick it pre. I said, put right. my tape in your in your car. Listen to the beginning of the intro. You're going to come back and buy everything I got, I guarantee you. He'll put right. my car, join in the car, come back, buy everything. I used to come out in an hour and sell 2,000 tapes in one hour. I mean, sell 100 tapes. Sell 100 tapes. And make two thousand dollars in an hour. Uh-huh. They, I was well, making. They were selling twenty out of facts. I was selling twenty out of tapes. Yeah, you could right. be with crack dealers. Right, I was getting, I was getting it just a little slower, but I was getting right. what they were getting. You right. know what I'm saying? That's and, you know, fire. And, and it was crazy. Like every day, all day, to the point where it got me to my first album deal. It got me to my first television show. It got me to my first radio deal. First album deal, Sony. First album deal was uh, was Warner Brothers, uh, the Kick Capri, the tape album, mm. Bismarck, rest in peace. He right. got me that deal. And um, I didn't even want an uh, album deal, to tell you the truth. He, he got me that deal because I got hot in the street with the mixtapes. He came up on me one day. I did a show somewhere. He came up and pulled up on me in the MPB. Oh, my Bismarck. Yeah. Yes. So, yo, I'm get your album deal. Shut up, Biz. I don't know about <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in Burt Padell's office with this big money. That's that count, right? Really That's the money, man. Yeah, yeah, That's the money, man. I'm like, oh, shit. So we did the album. I'm writing the joints in there. I wasn't no rapper, nothing like that. Mm. But I said little rhymes on my mixtapes. And, you know, it caught up in the street. You know, the tapes got real hot. So I guess anything that was on the tapes was going to catch. Right. So I would say those little rhymes I was saying on there. I would write other stuff. Me and Kuvi did the beats. Joint came out. I went on tour with it. You know, it was an experience. But I got... The DJ thing is what what blew up. And, and that's what made me... That's what people know me as, you know. So when I did Def Comedy Jam, at the time... People didn't really care about DJs. They looked at DJs as, you know, he just played records. 
You know what I'm saying? If you that's wasn't the first Jazzy time you Jeff, was on TV, that's the first television show was Def Comedy Jam? It wasn't the first television show I wasn't on. It was the first te- television show that was mine. That okay. was that I was a part of. You know what I'm okay. saying? But I was always, I was doing other stuff. Well, like, MTV raps and shit like that? Yeah, stuff okay. like that. But the first thing that was mine, that I was a, really a part of. What does of that the mean? Def when Comedy you say Jam. it's yours, what exactly do you mean that someone listens? Russell Simmons, Martin Lawrence, Kid Capri. That was the principal. You guys own the show? No, Russell owns the show. Okay. But... But I was there from beginning to end, so it's, yeah, right, it's, right, it's, right, it's right. mine too. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. When you think of Def Comedy Jam, you think of yep. Russell, Martin, Kid Capri, and mm-hmm. the comedians. Right. So you know, and the um, so when that came, that gave me a chance to you know, even though you see me five seconds lose spurts. Right. No, that was huge. Nah. It was so huge in your and living room for the DJ too. So when you right, you know, what I'm saying? it was inspirational to me watching right. it. I'll tell you, yeah, right. it just opened doors. It gave people that didn't care about DJs, you know, a chance to see. Yeah, well, all right. And then when I come to their to the, uh, town to do the actual concert, then they really see, yep. you know, the bulk. They really see it. Right. Like now, 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 this is the changing of the guard. Now, here's when the DJ is starting to be looked at like an artist now. Right. Because of what I did with that television show, and what I did with those mixtapes and that album. Than the artists in some ways. Exactly, but it didn't even get there yet. Okay. It didn't get there yet. But now it's starting to get to the point where now they, now they got to pay attention because I'm a force to be reckoned with on that stage. It doesn't mm. matter what tour it is, who you got, how big his record is. Right. You get Kick and Pre on that stage, he's going to be the talk of that show just as well as that platinum artist. That, that was the stance I had to take in order for people to take the DJ serious. Right. Before that, we were getting paid fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. If you wasn't behind Jazzy, if you wasn't Jazzy Jeff behind Fresh Prince, or you wasn't Jam Master J behind Run DMC, or you wasn't Red Alert on the radio, which radio stations around the country wasn't playing, we playing hip hop. So if you had right. that job, you was special. You right. know what I'm saying? If you wasn't that, you wasn't looked at as you know this great thing. And I'm sitting there like, yo, we are great. This is an art. Like, how they going? Like, nah. So I had to take the stance I took. Got to pay me a certain way. You ain't putting me in no corner or no stage, center stage. I'm going to rip the building down. If you, if I'm packing this building, the same building that you paying this guy that only got two records, and he only come on stage for a half hour to rock out, and I'm there for two hours destroying the spot, then you're going to pay me the same way you're mm. paying him. You're right. going to treat me the same way you're treating him. And if you're not, give it to somebody else. You'll be back around. Because you have to know your value. You know have to you have to take that serious. And if no, if you don't, right. nobody else will. And that's what happened to where it changed the garden. And then I made the first album of its kind, the soundtrack to the streets. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where I had Jay and Nas and this one and that one on the air, I was able to do that. The first to make the kick and pre-tape album, a DJ as a rapper. So I did a lot of things, you know, where innovating and helped the DJ move forward. But but if you go back again, who's inspiring you to do tapes, to, to DJ? Who's the beginning of all this to you? When I came in, I started DJing with Star Child, right? And in the SNS Club, it, it, it didn't mean to happen like that. The SNS Club was a place that you wasn't just allowed to be in there. You had to be somebody. You had to be this certain kind of person, right? And I'm sitting there the first time I've ever been there. And a drug dealer walked up and said to somebody that drives... Touch a class, yo! I, I I I I bet 150 dollars. I bet 150 dollars that kid will be Star Child. Walked up to me. I'm like, nah, man. I'm not here for that. I'm chilling. Like, nah. You, you didn't miss missed Star Child at this time? I didn't even meet Star Child. Well, you yet. knew you knew of him. I knew of him. Okay. I'm listening to him playing. He's playing right there. Okay. I'm sitting there just watching everything that's going on. Like, this is some shit. Were you spinning at that point yet? I was playing music, uh, okay, no, but not okay. at the spot. I was sitting there right, just right. Like watching what's going on. It's my first time there. So I'm watching this. I'm looking what's going on. I'm like, damn, this is what they're talking about. Because I always heard about the S. I'm like, yo, this is what they're talking about. Seeing all these people and, you know, different street people, Alpo walking and this one walking. I'm looking, I'm like, damn, shit. The dude comes up and he shot, you know, 100 feet out. I was like, nah, nah, nah. You know, with drug dealers at the time, you know, you can't tell them no. They're going to they gonna yeah. make you yes you to death. Yeah, Yo, right. go ahead, come on, kid. Yeah. Yeah. And then Star Child said something slick on the mic. God bless his soul. He said something slick on the mic up there, and I ran up there and uh, did one move, blew the whole club up. He turned to me. He was like, yo, kid, I'm selling 20 out of tapes. We should do it together. We split the money, 10-10. I'm like, all right, fuck it. We end up doing it. So mm. we got six tape decks up in there. We copy the tapes. People buy the tapes right there. Next thing you know, the tapes is all over the place. So me and Star, we were so loved in that club. You couldn't breathe wrong at us. You couldn't look wrong at us. Or anybody that came in there, we were so protected 
by some of the most craziest dudes that we, you know, we wasn't on that, but right. they lived a certain way and they and they took us very serious. But we went through raids in there. We went through cops coming there, breaking up the toilets, throwing, they throwing guns, crack bottles, coke bottles all over the floor. And it was crazy, man. Um, we'll leave there, go up the block to the Zodiac, which is another club owned by the same person, getting there, joint be ran packed. Somebody coming in, robbed the gambling Maybe it was, a, it was a crazy time. But I did that for a year and a half with Star. And you know what? I'm glad I did it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why my first record on my first album was called The Apollo. Mm. It's about uh, saluting Harlem and Uptown. And now my record Uptown was the same thing, to go back and salute the people that held me up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, mm. I may not agree with what they might have been doing at the time, but I wouldn't talk down on it because those right. are the ones that was buying the tapes. They're the ones that kept my name right. out there. So it was definitely it, it, a like, time. like how like how um, <coughs> strippers is the A and R's for um, like like um, strip club music. Drug dealers was the A and R for um, for for New York music for, for the street. Yeah, for the absolutely. Streets. Yeah, not, my yeah, music, not New York music. Yeah, I mean, my mixtapes was the soundtrack was a soundtrack to those type of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you, when they drove down Eighth Avenue and they heard right. their name screaming out on the tape, it meant so much to them. You know right. what I'm saying? And then the certain type of the type of music that I was bringing out is the music that people like. Well, it, was, it wasn't just me. It was me. It was Star Child. It was Boosie B. It was you know that type of music. I brought a lot to the game. Star Child brought a lot to the game. Boosie brought a lot to right. the game. But that type of music made the street people feel it. It was like a. It was just like a feeling they had that certain kind of music. Mm. It was their soundtrack. It was the soundtrack. That's right. why I named my album Soundtrack <clears throat> to the Streets, my second album. Mm. Um, when I did that, because I, I gave them the soundtrack for so long right. with the mixtapes. Right. <clears throat> and when I put this album together, it was like I was kind of almost doing it that way, but in a, in a different way. I wasn't trying to be like a DJ on the, on the album. I was a producer. I was looking more like I was trying to be a Quincy Jones. And at the time, Quincy Jones had called me to come in to do his album. I this had is crazy, dude. You just said that like, it ain't shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't Chrissy trying to Jones do it. Well, Chrissy Jones. He, he was just called anybody. <laughs> he did the Q's Jew joint album. He asked me to come and start the album off with Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. So I did the first wow. record with Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles and Bono. It's called Let the Good Times Roll. So I'm wow. sitting there in the studio with Quincy Jones and Rod Templeton. I'm in the middle with it. Rod Templeton is the dude that wrote the Off the Wall album for Michael Jackson. I'm sitting there between them. They got their arms around me. I'm looking at them like this. I'm looking at them like this. They ain't going to care. This is what I want you to do. And they telling me this stuff. And I'm standing there. I'm saying, yo, look at the money that I'm sitting in between. Just the fact that I'm in between these dudes. Right. You know, sometimes we, 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 uh, we get these looks and we get these accolades, and we don't really look at how special it is because we always get an accolade, so it's like a thing we're used to. But I see and pinpoint each thing for what it is. And to sit there, to be called from Quincy Jones. First of all. Yeah. First of all. Yeah. Let's not right. even get to get into the right. studio. Just to be right. called, to have that in his mind, that is everything. Then to be sitting there in between him, you know, and then he asked me to come to his uh, party, his birthday party. Right? Mm. I go to his birthday party. As soon as I get to the door, Oprah Winfrey is right there. She goes, oh, there goes my baby Kid Capri. My mans, I got two of my dudes with me. My man Dougie, my man RC. They looked at each other like this <laughs> because they bugging. They from the block. They don't be around this stuff. So they see Oprah Winfrey saying that I was bugging because I didn't even know she knew me. Right. <laughs> but she said that. So then me, her, Brandy took a picture, hung out. Quincy took me to his case where he had 55 Grammys in a case. This is in his party. This is 55 Grammys. You, he tried to get one. Right. He got 55 in the case. And this is back then. So right. the dude was big, very influential to me, and that's what I wanted to be. So when I did Soundtrack to the Streets, that's how I was thinking of being the Quincy Jones of hip hop. Mm. So at what point you and Star Child stopped making tapes together? Once I stopped, once I left the S, um, anything I ever do, I didn't even want to be stuck. Right? The, the tapes was a stepping stone for me. When Hot 97 asked me to come and do Hot 97, I told them no, not because they wasn't the number one station, it was because they was the number one station. They didn't need me, mm. you know what I'm saying? They already had what was going on. Plus, I wanted to be in the world. This before the, and keep in mind, this before the internet. Right. So I'm doing 200 to 250 shows around the country. 
I wanted to touch Mississippi. I wanted to touch Florida. I wanted to touch California. I wanted to touch these people and let them see what New York was and how we could bring New York to y'all and make y'all happy and still be able to do what y'all like. In Houston, they got music that they love that nobody ever heard. Right. When, when, when you go there and you know that music, you become so much bigger. And that's what happened with me. I would go to St. Louis. I would go to these different places and make sure that the main DJ out there, yo, what's going on out here? What's popping? Okay? Cover my show. I'm going to make sure we blow you up out there because you are the main dude in the city, so I'm going to make sure we keep the light on you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of dudes at times, the promoters will come and get, get me to come do their show, and that main DJ in that city will say, yo, I'm the hottest dude out here. Why you got to get kicked free? And they'll, the promoters say, sit there and watch him. Sit there and watch and then that DJ will watch and see that first show. And then I come back and do another show. And he see that show and how I ripped the mud hole in this place. And now when I come back, that DJ is doing me at that show. He never talked in the microphone. Yeah. He never played records quick or the way I played it. He never played those type of records. But when I come back, that's what he's doing. Now imagine if I'm going all around the world and everywhere I go, all the DJs is doing that. Before that, they wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? So that was my contribute, my contribution to music. That, you know, to help the DJ move along. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, was, it was always about looking at the DJ as an artist. It was never yeah. about just me. It's never about me. Any show I do, it's never about me. It's always about the crowd. I take myself and look at, look at it as if I'm in the crowd watching myself and what would make me want to come back to see me again. Right. What would make me feel good watching me again? What would make a promoter want to book me again? You know what I'm saying? And that's what makes me go so hard because it's not about me. It's never been about me. Mm. So the it's a blunt right there. Can, can oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the rumor is, right, I, I'll say his name. I was, was going to say his name. But, um, like, Funk Flex used to not let his, the DJs that come on before him play certain records, right? Mm -hmm. And when I found out that that's somewhat of a normal thing, like if you if you're the if you're the man DJ, you tell these dudes, you know, you can't play this, this, and that. Is that is that something you ever done? Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for it. Okay. If you see Technician, the DJ that did the joint with the locks, uh -huh. yeah. Technician been on the road with me for twenty something years. Technician seen me rip different places down and do different things, to where he became so great because it wasn't just me it was other DJs he watched but he seen me on a constant basis do this right. every show so when he did what he did with the locks I wasn't surprised he's supposed to right right mm -hmm. but the reason why my shows are so have so much magnitude to it is because I want like I said it's not about me I want people to feel better than they did before they got there they can't do that if they hear the same song three, four times a night. Mm. You notice how a lot of parties right now, everybody's standing around and everybody's in their phone and all that. That don't happen in my parties. Yeah, my they, parties they're glorified jukeboxes. Right, <laughs> exactly. Because, because they, the continuity, it's a continuity that has to keep right. going. It has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. You have to build people up. You see what I'm saying? And it's you against a whole room full of people that you don't even know. You just gotta, it's up to you to satisfy everybody in this room at one time. So how do you do that? You have to be the best you can be, and how do you do that is you have to tell a story. If you a DJ that comes in at 10.30 at night and nobody drank nothing at 10.30 at night, who wants to hear the hottest record at 10.30 at night? Right. But this DJ is thinking about burning the next dude that comes out. He's thinking about himself. He's thinking about, let me get as much shine as I can. Right. Don't matter records. about the event. Don't the matter. Right. It don't matter none of that. It, and that's why I brought a DJ across the country with me Everywhere who I will went. open up. Who, who will open up. up. I'm right. paying this dude. I'm paying for his hotel. I'm he's seeing, you know, that's bread I can keep in my pocket. But I care about my crowd so much that I'll use that bread to make sure that every show is right. Mm -hmm. You don't hear the same song in one night because we have so much music to play and the way we play it is going to be so crazy. You, you ain't going to miss it. But mm -hmm. even if they did play the record before you, and you played the same record, it was it, it really person, doesn't, the way that the showmanship that you had. <laughs> Those DJs didn't have it. it, it yeah, it, it really doesn't doesn't matter. Right. But it takes away an impact that I'm trying to build. Right, right, it's right. an impact that I want to keep. If you heard a song that that you wanted to hear all night, and then I come and play, it ain't going to be the same impact. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Same thing, vice versa. Let's say it's me opening up for you, which is very rare, but let's say that's the case. <laughs> I'm going to stay. I'm, it's about the people. I know that you're the principal. They paying you a certain amount of money to do a certain thing and look so a certain way. So you would do way. that? You would do that for Absolutely. another Absolutely. Oh, I, wow. I did it before. I did it many times. Like, uh. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what it's about. It's about knowing it's not about you. But, but who do you open up for? I wanna. I mean, like I said, it's very rare that I open up for anybody uh. because I'm always headlining. Well, who, well, who? I opened up for, uh, matter of fact, the last joint I did, the last one, the last person I went before was Mr. C. We did a joint in Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. And with Mr. C, his name is the finisher. Right. So it's in his contract. It's not as in his contract. No, I don't have to do you, that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> you know, that's, you. it's the respect. Like, right. go ahead, do your thing. That's what it is. If you right. the finisher, finish it. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's right. a great DJ on top of that. Right. It ain't like he can't follow me. You know, do your thing. But I'ma give them hell in that building. There's a lot that you know, you gotta step it up. How about I'm, some I'm DJs hard. that you find out that now is getting a million dollars a show? How do I feel what? Like, how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, like, you, you hear these DJs just now, and they're technically not playing records, some of them. Some of them are playing sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's different genres there. I'm going to say this, man. <laughs> like, them. The EDM, what record is that? If you talk about EDM, if you talk about EDM. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously. If you talk about EDM, yeah. EDM is big no matter who plays it. It's the right. music that right. they. It's the music itself. You don't even got no words, kid. It's like that. Exactly. It could be the drugs themselves. <laughs> it's, it could be that. It could be. It could be. It's the music for right, for right. them. No, no, yeah, right. Right. I remember Akon said to me, "Yo, kid, you can go to Europe and sell out concerts by yourself in the arenas because there's DJs out there that don't have no name that's doing it with the EDM music. All you got, I got to do is start making EDM music. It's not what I do. I do it. I can make it." Right. But I will make it for somebody else. You can make not it for me. <laughs> Absolutely, I can make anything. I can make any kind of music, and that's why a producer. That's why a producer need to know: don't get stuck in one box. Right. Be able to make anything. If somebody, right. when Madonna asked me to produce her joint, how I not know I mean, how to make my, the way you just throw the these out you. I'm sorry, I'm kind of lost a little bit. <laughs> that was Madonna hard. reached out uh-huh. to do something for her MDMA album. Ooh. I did a record called Madonna's. Yo, Madonna, nobody better not say nothing bad about Madonna. That's how Madonna bossed me, right? No she, finger popping going on. No, no. <laughs> no finger popping. But she gave me a big bag for this record that she wanted me to do, right? Okay. Called Masterpiece. I did the record. Done. Then she asked me to do, she did the record with Nicki Minaj, right? right. That was out. And she paid LMFAO to do the remix. Mm. But then she paid me the same amount of money she paid me for the Masterpiece record to see what I was going to do with the Nicki Minaj record. Just to record. see what Just she was going to do. And she never got the record. She never heard the record, never received the record, never got the record. And she paid me this money. Well, the not, record never came out. Oh, I but, played it once or twice on my radio the show. In. It's not like you never sent the record in. <laughs> what? They never asked for the record. I even couldn't even get in touch with them. Oh shit! Big they bucks. paid you two big bags. They paid you and got away from you like as if they owed like you money. <laughs> <laughs> Madonna is the shit. She, that's that's gangster. Nobody shit. Like, never talk bad about yeah. Madonna. Let me just tell you. You know, you know, I know Madonna's a gangster. She had the same face on. When she was hanging out with Kanye, AB, and Mayweather, as she had on when she hung out with Tupac, it was the same exact face. I said, she know how to turn her hip hop face on. <laughs> <laughs> She's a legend. She's hip hop in her own way. So, um, yeah, let's do quick time. Let's do quick time. All right, so we don't know if we know. You want to explain the rules? Come on, because I always fuck it up. The rules are he's going to give you two names. <laughs> If you politically correctly act and answer the, the question, right. we're drinking. So that means if you say both or neither, we're drinking. You're drinking, we're all drinking. Okay. But, but if you if you say... No, I gave him... Yeah, that's, gave it. Him, that's it. Yeah. All right, cool. My bad. I made it easier. All right, that's it. Yeah, you made it easy. So it's one or the other, nobody drinks. If you pick one, you pick both or neither, we all drink. All right. All right. You can pick anything, any alcohol. De Leon or Sierra. You can pick up that alcohol. Are we ready? Hey, you want to do a shots? You want what kind of shots you want? I'm gonna do my. You pick it, man. I'm 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 not the connoisseur. I'm gonna do my De Leon on the side, baby. All right, cool. You ready? (laughs) 
Just saying. DMX or Tupac? I'm going to say DMX and then, can I give a reason? Yes, yes you can. I was putting DMX on stage before DMX was DMX. Did he have a dog with him? Did, huh? <laughs> Did he have a dog with him? No. Okay. No, DMX was on, I put DMX on stage in the castle in the Bronx when I was playing the castle. And DMX didn't even have the rough voice at the time. He had a wow. different kind of voice. Wow. <clears throat> and he was going at K-Solo. <clears throat> Spellbound. Wow. Mm. Right. They had beef. Right. Yeah, I heard it did. Yeah, he, had a beat. he even he said it on us. He said, "Until the dude came, so he go." Uh, yeah, and this is back, get out, get out, back then. Yeah, yeah. Back then, so uh, he was always DMX. I ain't gonna say before he was DMX, but he was right. always, but he wasn't known to the world yet. And he had a record called "Born Loser" that I was playing on our uh, BLS. Haven't heard no other DJ play it. I it was the only DJ I ever heard play that record. Matter of fact, I haven't really heard anybody play it since then. Right. And um, after that, he blew up when he got his deal, but. So that's why I would say DMX. Okay, no problem. Jada Kiss or Jay Z? It's okay to take a shot. It's okay to take a shot. You have Sirac called De Leon. When, when you ask me this, what do you ask? Is skills wise? No, it, it, it's, 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 it's your it, criteria. criteria. Whatever yeah. your criteria to answer one way or the other. Oh, we got our shot. Thanks for the play by play action, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Mm. I'm going to say <laughs> Jay because of everything, not just because of the records. When you say Jay, you mean Jay-Z, not Jay-Z. Jay-Z because okay. of the biz business and everything that's going on, all the opportunities he's creating for everybody, you know, so yeah. Okay. Big L or Big Pun? Mm. And we got to talk about Big L afterward. I'm going to say Big Hmm. Take a shot, Kiki Pri. You ain't got to yeah, be. I'm going to take a shot. Yeah, you got to. What do you want to do? Some rock? Yeah, you take a small small. Yeah, give me, give me, give me yeah, anyone. You want the Japanese, um, um, the Japanese yeah, deli? Anyone, I'll take this. <laughs> the Japanese deli. Kill that! Kill that! That was awesome. I can't that right now, man. That deal's not good, though. Solo, solo, solo. You next. You next, E? Or you are, I'll, I'll hold it down for you. I'll hold mind. it down for you. Rock him or KRS? Rock him. I gotta go with KRS. Okay. I think he's gonna do that anyway. Queen Latifah or MC Light? This is always a hard one for me. Mm. I love MC Light. But I gotta go with Queen because of her. What's, what's her real name? Everybody keeps saying her real name. Dana. I mean, yeah, Dana. You gotta go with like, Dana. Yeah, you gotta go with Dana. Like, because of, of I'm her, her queen range, for the rest of her, her life. range of everything her that Dana she got, ever. got going on. I'm sorry, say it again. I gotta go with Dana because of her range of everything she has yeah, going okay. on. But it's really even almost. Yeah, yeah I we see need that. Both Andre yeah. Champs. Mm-hmm. Foxy Brown or Eve? Mmm, give me a drink. All right, cool. All right, I respect that. Give me a drink. I respect that, yeah. Yeah, I'm putting some ice in my shit, too, on my Japanese deli. Yo. <laughs> you don't got to pour heavy. You can do light, yeah, light you shots. You can do light shots. Light shots. Light shots, shots yeah. 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 Yeah, you can do light shots. You all ain't right. got to go heavy at all. All right. That was dope. Okay. Salud. Want me to get the next one? Mm-hmm. Busta Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, let me pour up. <laughs> oh yeah, these, these are meant to you. <laughs> I told you, light like yeah. shots. Yeah, do light like shots. Uh, Buster Eminem. Hmm. That's a good shot. Right. <laughs> 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 Might as well just hold the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> the light shots, light shots, light shots, light, light, shot, light, light shots. Shot. It's a long game. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. Cool. Long game. All right, let's go. All right. You don't believe us. Ooh. So, ooh, this is a good one. Red Alert. Or Molly Maul. Mm. Gotta go with Red Alert. He went with you, you know, by the way. We had. Yeah. I know. He went with you, but I know. Gotta go with Red Alert. Red Alert is above all to me. Okay. Illmatic or ready to die? This is the weed spot, the legal weed spot. Text me every day. 
I'm, I figured like if my friend did this, he'd be in jail right now. They just tell me, the legal weed spot tells me they deals. You know, the legal weed spot. They text me every day, hey, I got I got the new strawberry shit. I'm like, yo, <laughs> this is ill. Like, yo, in the 90s, That's how you know shit is legal. in the 90s, like I would have been erasing his messages. <laughs> Illmatic or ready to die? It's a tough one, too. Hmm. I gotta take a drink on that one. Okay. <laughs> Damn, I'm oh, mad. Go light, go light. Yeah, I'm going very light on this one. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You're the next one. Yeah, hold on. Let's drink, let's, right, let's drink it up. Let's drink it up. Let's drink it up. Let's go. Cheers to the left. Mm. Cheers. Right. Next one is MPC 3000 or Machine? Machine. Even though the MP, I have all the MPs, but and I started off as an MP dude, but my this album I just made, I did with the whole, with the machine, the whole album. She's dope. Yeah, man, I love machine. I'm gonna do it. Yep. Yo, MTV raps or video music box? Video music box. That's kind of like an easy one. Ralph and James, we need you up here. Yeah, we do. Okay, this is this is one you might have to drink. ODB or Bismarcky? Bismarcky, of course. ODB, of course. That's my dude. Right, but right. Bismarcky, come on. He's the first in that style. He's the first to do ahead of his time. He, plus, he did so much for me. He got my first album deal. It yeah. seems that he's, he's in so many people's stories. Yeah, Biz. It's crazy. It's, it, it, it's crazy. They need to do a movie on Biz. I want. I want to play Biz. I've been yeah. saying that for years. Yeah, they need to do Biz. a movie on Biz. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Biz I, I want to play Biz. Biz made a whole other life for itself in entertainment with kids with the Yo Gabba Yo Gabba Gabba. Know him about music. That shit was from, <laughs> incredible. He was like yeah. a superhero. Yeah, yeah. That shit. Right. Okay, Snoop Dogg or the Game? Snoop. DJ Premier or Pete Rock? <clears throat> Pour up. I don't have to drink. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah. That's a it tough is. one. Give me a little ice cube in there. All right, you got the next one, E. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 Salud. Um, the locks or Run DMC? Up. That Locks one for me is easy. DMC. Huh? That one for me is easy. It doesn't seem that easy. I mean, to be honest it's, with you. come on, we got to go with Run DMC. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, on that one, I think even the locks would go with Run no, DMC. They would. They would. They would. Um, I'm, I, I want to ask this one. Go ahead. Funk Flex or DJ Clue? I thought she was going to say Funk Flex or Kick Capri. No, 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 no. <laughs> I swear he was going to say that. I'm glad you did. <laughs> no. no. Uh, funk Flex or Clue? Both influential. Both legends. Um, let me take a drink. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I didn't expect that. Yeah, you're taking more drinks than I drink. thought you would have to take. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, I get hey. <laughs> That's that's respect. You got though. a lot of friends. You got a lot of friends. That's a lot of people. Okay. Cheers, cheers. All right, cool. Oh, let's take that cheers. first. All right, you, you want the next one or I got it? Mm. I got it. Kanye or Pharrell? <sighs> Pharrell's the shit, but I would have to go with Kanye. Let me think about that. <laughs> Let me think about that for a second. Look, oh. Oh, quick time. <laughs> I know, but hey, I, man, man, hey, some man, things man, can't man. be quick. Some things can't yeah, be quick. Don't rush the legend, man. Some things can't be quick. Don't rush the legend. Let's do what they want. This has not been quick for a long time. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I got to see these people afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go see your clip yeah, of this okay, shit. Why you should know me? Um, I'm going to take a drink. Yo, bye. I did. Yo! Japanese Deleon is hitting Samurai. Salute. Salute. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to turn Dominican into drinking. <laughs> Battle Cat or Felly Fell? Battle Cat. Felly Fell's the shit, but yes. Battle Cat did so much, man. Yes. You know. Big up Battle Cat. Yeah. 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 And Big Up Felly Fell both as well. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, right. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But that Dre, you know, the work that he's done with Dre, Battle Cat, it's just so much. It's so right. much. Wu-Tang Clan or N.W.A.? 
Wu Tang Clan. That's because you're East Coast. That's because I was the first to play Wu Tang Clan on the radio. God damn, let's make some wow. noise for that. Yeah, the rough draft of Protect Your Neck? Protect Your Neck. They yeah. came in, I think it was ODB, RZA, and somebody else that came to the st uh, station with the record on the Orange label. And I didn't even check to see if it was Wasn't even white label yet? It was it Orange? Was, it was an Orange label. Jeez. And they, I didn't it even check to see if it was... press? Yeah, it was like a... It, no, well, it was an independent... I guess they wasn't signed allowed right, yet. Right. So they, um, I played it. He didn't even check to see if it was curses on it. Protect Your Neck played it. The blue. If you look at the movie, if you look at their documentary, you see them going crazy when I played yeah. the record. That's a true story because uh. it's the first one to play on the radio. In the documentary up. or um, on, on the, their on, on the Hulu, their, the Hulu joint. You see Hulu. the last joint. And it's Kick Pre playing it. Is yeah, it he played. He got me on the radio. He took, I'm talking on the radio. He asked me to do it. I talked on the radio, really? and then I played the song, and you see them going season crazy. Season one. Is season one. Oh, last one. Le season two. The last. Season two. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and it's the first. Uh, Arm Stretch Armstrong and Barbito played it. They played it on uh, Underground Radio, but I think. I think they play, they was the first to play it on underground, but I was right. the first to play it on the mainstream. Uh, I mean, okay, okay, mm. commercial. Jeez, That's crazy. So you saying you broke Wu Tang Clan? Mm -hmm. It wasn't because of you. I'm not saying it was because of, of me. They won't blow anyway. They won't blow anyway. Before you played it, you heard it. Yeah. I and what did you think hearing that? I thought it was crazy because that was something brand new. But I ain't expecting to be blow up like me and Fifty. Me and Fifty was set was on the same label, Columbia. At the same time, I did. I produced Rowdy Rowdy for Fifty. Right. Right. I, did, I knew he was dope. I knew he was a crap. I wanted him on my album. As a matter of fact, I don't know what happened. I don't know what track masters did. I don't know what happened. But Look, I, I wasn't around at that time. It's a freestyle with 50. It's me, you. That was at my session. Yo, that was that's that. my session. Right. Right. He was on my yeah. album. Yeah, you know, yeah, he was on my yeah, album yeah. with Punt. Yeah. He, yeah. he did a record called The Block Party. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I wanted 50 on the album. Right. But I don't know what happened. But I ended up doing Rowdy Rowdy for 50. Right. I had no idea. I knew he was incredible, but I didn't know who he was on to this level. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't see that. You know what I'm saying? I, maybe I should have, but right. that dude, he really, he really worked. He really, so you're drawing the same parallels with when you heard Wu. You didn't know it was going to go. I didn't know it was going to, like, I know it's a hit, but I don't know, I didn't, I don't, you can't never predict how big somebody's going to get. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I know when somebody says, yo, kid, is this a hit? I can predict it. I can say, yeah, that's it. Okay. And I did that for a lot of jazz. I got so many gold plaques and gold awards and Jesus. all that kind of, from that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Kendrick or J. Cole? I'm going to say Kendrick only because K. J. Cole never came and got me. Kendrick did. <laughs> <laughs> he might go. He might, he might, he might, he might, might come. Joint album, J. Cole, if they ever do that same. joint album. Podcast or radio? I say podcast, but radio makes you a superstar. Mm. Real talk. Radio, when you get your record played on the radio, and the DJs is on it, and and and, and it's a rotation. That makes you a star. That makes you a superstar. Podcasts. They always ask me to do podcasts. My radio show on Sirius XM Fly, the Block Party. If you listen to my show, I always keep everything positive. You could have did some shit last night that was negative. Some can have. You could have got arrested or whatever. I right. don't talk about that. Right, I talk right. about moving forward, not knocking anybody that do because we need that. You know what I'm saying? But it's just what I choose to do. So that when people used to ask me, yo, okay, why don't you do your own podcast? That always been in my mind. Do I have to talk down on people? No, you ain't gonna no, do you that. Don't do and that. then yeah. I realized I didn't. Yeah. So maybe I might, you know, put one together. Okay. Never know. Doggy style or the chronic? Chronic. Because there would be no doggy style probably exactly. without the chronic. Right. Like that. Dr. Dre or Puff Daddy? Take a drink. You're on Revolt TV, goddammit. <laughs> I'm drinking this Japanese deli young, baby. And samurai. Samurai and Kenda. And Kenda. And Kenda? You gotta pronounce it. You gotta pronounce it rich. Salud. Cheers. Mm. Uh, DJ Quick or DJ Musty? <clears throat> Mustard's <coughs> Mustard's a shit. I told Mustard, wait till you see him publishing checks. Mm -hmm. They had that crazy year of him playing. Yep, I said, wait yep. till you see him publishing checks. It's gonna be crazy. And now he lives in a crazy house. It's a lifetime of. Money. But, but I'm gonna go with Quick. I'm gonna yeah, go Quick because OG. He was, yeah, he's a OG. super triple OG. OG. Yeah, we've been trying to get Quick on here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Juice. If, you, if you remember, Bernie Mac said, "Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? DJ Quick, Kicker Pre? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Shout out to Quick. 
That's right. That's right. Uh, DJ, um, excuse me, Juice or New Jack City? New Jack City. But aren't you in Juice? No. But Juice was in the club that I, that club that they did the battle in, yeah. that was a powerhouse. I made that club big down oh, okay. town. Okay, that's why, that's why. That's okay. why they did the movie in that club. Oh. I, I love the movie, but the other movie was more. Was the DJ booth really there? Yeah, the DJ booth was up on top of the, it was like a rail. It had right, a rail. Yeah, that's how and, it was in the movie, yeah. Yeah, it was like a rail, and then, yeah. And then they put people in front of it, they built something under it to put people in front of it. So, yeah, it was dope. But um, New Jack City, I think, was more, hit harder, hit harder in the street than Juice. The Juice was incredible, but. Respect or loyalty? Last question. Loyalty. Because loyalty is going to bring, is automatically respect. If you have loyalty with me, you, with mm. me, you respect me. Mm. Right? Absolutely. We always say that that's the only trick question we got here. Because really, that's the only time you should be really taking a shot. It's loyalty or respect. Because I think they go hand in hand. In our I mean, opinion. everybody yeah. has their own perspective it's, always, on it. it's everyone's own perspective, though. Yeah. Well, with the, my people, people that I've always been around and circle myself around, you know, there's always been a respect thing. There's always been loyalty. My manager been my manager 20 something, 27 years, 26 years. Uh, my role manager, Jim. He been my manager, my role manager for just as long. And Jim is the type of dude, he ain't trying to take being pictures. He don't want you to take pictures of him. He don't care about all the cute shit going on. Right. He don't care about none of that. I went around and gave jobs to a lot of people around my old block, you know, and no this shot to them, but they, it just wasn't for them. This is you being loyal, you said. This is me being loyal to my people. Okay. I opened up a hand shop for 10 years with Curtis that cuts everybody. This here, Curtis, Curtis Smith. Uh -huh. Opened a shop called Ebenezer in Curtis my hood. Blow. No, Curtis Blow. Smith. Uh, shop called Ebenezer in the hood in my, in my block for 10 years, you know, to try to get back to my spot. I always gave back, you know, try to go back, get people that grew up with me or whatever a job. And it's not, it may not be for them. You know what I'm saying? Everything is not for everybody. Right. Sure. I remember one dude said to me, yo kid, I want to go on your tour bus. Y'all look like y'all be having a bunch of fun, man. Y'all look like y'all be doing your thing. I want to go hang out. Cool, come on. Bring them on. Two days later, yo, I don't know how y'all do this shit, man. How y'all gonna be in this bus all the time? Because it's not for you. You're not built you for it. You can't take a shit in the tour it's bus. Right. It's not, you can't. Can't. Well, you can't. I can't. I'm going to tell you what I was old. The man, person was who, the person the who the bus taken out was nice. Yeah. I just put a bag inside the toilet bowl. I've never heard of this kid. Hey, no, this I ain't gotta stop the okay. bus. All right, all right. So what are you doing? All right. That means he keeps the pool Let's around. Let's say we gotta get somewhere quick, uh -huh. right? Yeah. You don't want to stop. Don't want to stop. So you get the you get the path mark back. Put a bag. Put that shit get, in the, the toilet bowl. Bag. Make sure it fit right. It, you shit your ass Publix. in that bag and you twist the tie of that bag. You throw the shit out. Pull the bag, bust over, throw it out. It's like walking a dog. But the problem is, everybody in the bus <laughs> smells that yourself. shit. Yo, everybody in the bus <laughs> smells that shit. So, me knowing that it bothers everybody, it made me want to do it even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, let me just shit right, for no so, reason. Man, <laughs> it, it, it's the fuck everybody. Yo, kid, what? I, Yo, me, I went on tour with Pun one time. A lot of fun. And Pun was giving everyone welfare cheese. So, <laughs> uh, on the bus? <laughs> I'm on my bus, so... Bunch of these niggas is coming uh, to me like, you can can we have with you? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, y'all with pun, I can't allow that. And then they're like, oh, pun is giving. And pun was literally giving everyone welfare cheese. Because you know what that is, it clogs you up. You can't yeah, shit. You can't. <laughs> you can't shit for the next 20 hours. And I was just like, oh my God, this is torture. <laughs> like, we pulling over Roy Rogers. I know some of y'all don't know where Roy Rogers is, but pull over Roy Rogers. Do y'all got Roy Rogers in the South? Yeah, I think so. Somewhere up north. No. I haven't seen Roy Rogers in years, as a matter of fact. I'm mad old school. Did I show my age just now? Did hey, I just show like I'm with you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> with you. <laughs> Who I did the vibe with Roy Rogers? <laughs> yeah, I think it's I've seen it driving around. Like when we yeah, drive around. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely fried chicken, fried chicken. Mm -hmm. Like well, you know you don't realize Waffle House is just some South shit. Yeah, it is. Now, like if you, a Waffle House was in New York, you know how much money they make? Really? Not Can, big and be in New yeah. York if there was a yeah. Waffle House. Man. Yeah. I wonder if we could open one up out there. Jesus. That's like us wanting a White Castle out here. Yes. Right. Yes. A White Castle in, like, Kentucky. They got, they got, they got crystals out here. It's not no, that's the not the same, same at all. No, no it's not the same. same. You had crystals before? Yeah, I ain't in there. Mm -mm. 
It's, it's not the same number of burgers. Not you don't even go to the bathroom the same. You <laughs> got right. you, 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 you don't be in the bathroom as long. Yeah, you got to regret it. You got to be like, yo, <laughs> this was not it. Why do we have to? Why do we have to leave the club and go here and get murder burgers? By the way, they call them murder. Burgers. Murder burgers. Yo, I, got, I, I talked to Fat Joe the other day. I was like, yo, you got to add for murder Big burgers. Big up to him for that. That's Big dope. up to Fat Joe for having an ad for murder burgers. A blockster. He's a blockster. Yes, He's from the yes, Bronx. Yes. You've been picking up Harlem all day, but you haven't, I haven't heard Isn't it hand in hand? Well, like you, I said. You, you born and raised in the Bronx, I, though, right? No, I, I, no, I was born in Brooklyn. Oh, wow. I was born in Brooklyn. I come from Brains, I, was, I used to live in Waynesburg Projects. I used to live in uh, Farragut Projects. I used to Farragut. live in Bedford Avenue. Wow. Then I left uh, Brooklyn and I moved to Manhattan for three years. Mm. Then I left Manhattan and I moved to the Bronx. When I moved to the Bronx, that's when I got kicked Capri the name. A girl mm. that used to um, be around us named Olga Carter. She said Kid Capri sounded like a good name for a DJ. Because you was drinking Capri Suns? I was no, 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 no. I was DJ Doctor Spank at the at the time. Dr. It was a terrible Spank. goddamn name. Terrible name. My first name was MC Yahoo with the ball to bean. Terrible name. Terrible name. Yeah, terrible name. Yeah, right. Pharrell's terrible. name. Pharrell had a crazy and name it was too. Foul too. But yeah. when she said Kid Capri. She was all girl named. It was a girl came. named Olga Carter. We were going in class. I didn't remember her name. We were going in class. Yeah, she was one of the girls I was from around right right right. away. Right. But we was in Scrimmy. We was in a uh, class together. We were going to, I remember Mr. Grant's class. And we were going in six uh, room six three zero oh, four. Right. That was a, a classroom. She said, "Kick a pre." Sound like a good name for a DJ. So we had this sporting goods store called F and S Sporting Goods, and we used to take sweatshirts and put our name on it. And at the time, we used to iron the creases, so we have eight creases across the shirt, and our name going down the thing. So I had kick a pre on my joint. And I was out. She didn't give you the meaning. Summer. She just said kick a pre. No, she just said kick a pre. So some months later, she was shot. By accident, by oh, a straight shit. bullet, and died. Oh, Damn, we did not know the story. Is true. Yeah. Right, yeah. and that's what made me keep the name, and in the name just of her, took like, me in honor of her. Right, God so bless her. Wow. that's Rest how I got the yeah. name. Bless her. Let's make some noise for her. Shout out to all the callers. Yeah, let's give her a moment of silence. Let's give her seven seconds to moment of silence. Bless her, bless her, yeah. bless her. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that story was going to turn like that. That's how you got Capri. That's she how never I said that you drank Capri Suns or none of that? No, nah, Capri Suns wasn't out then. It wasn't out? I think nah, Capri, Capri Suns, Suns was, didn't come out until the 90s. I thought them shits was out forever. Yeah, yeah, I was a little kid. Was, that shit didn't come out. Was Carhartt out then? Carhartt was out. Carhartt, Car, no. Carhartt. You know what? Carhartt might have been out, but we wasn't yes. on it yet. Yeah, because that store you're talking about, I feel like they still sell Carhartt right now. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So, I said his name earlier. We skipped over it. But at one point, it felt like you and Funk Flex. I don't know if it's the Bronx shit. It felt like you guys couldn't get along. Listen, man. Or didn't get along. I love I'm gonna Flex, take a shot. Man. I'm going to take a shot for this. Of oh, the summer okay. day. Okay. I'm going to take a shot. You ain't got to take a shot. I'm taking a shot. I got it right I'll take here. A shot. All right, cool, cool. So, what happened between you and Funk Flex? I love Flex. Let me just say that. Oh, All right. yeah, that's what's up. Oh, we like that. We but like I, that. We like that. Yeah. So, what yeah. happened? But, 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 you know. He get a little man. I'm a gorilla in uh -huh. this shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And at the end of the day, you know, I set a mark in this game. Flux, Funk Flex. What got me mad with Flex was that I felt like he was taking his power and mushing it in people's faces. Mm. If you're a little kid, mm -hmm. right, and you make a record and you put the record out and it's doing good, let's go on that. Right. Don't get in your radio and say, yo, this is trash over the mm. record. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's show the respect. So that's what my problem was. But when he said I fell off, like, what happened was we 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 had some words. I offered them, to, you know, something had happened, and then I got on the net and said, "Yo, let's battle. Let's battle for a hundred thousand. Let's battle for the name. You lose, you can't use your name." Wait, no say more. this again. You, so you was on. Would you say this? So you was they on. They did some tagging shit. You can't use your name no more. Yeah, you can't That's use your name if you lose. Shit. I can't use my name if I lose. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I just, damn, I felt like I, I skipped over a match here. So wait a minute. <laughs> um. Y'all talking, and then you said, let's battle for 100 grand, but how did this... No, what happened was, somebody had called me and said, yo, kid, Flex is uh, shit doing you on the net, right? On the radio? I, on, no, on, on the net. Yeah, on put the... a post up on the net, right? Okay. I was like, 
what are you talking about? So I went to go look at it. I saw it, it said it was a picture of him, red alert, and uh, Chuck Chill Out. Uh-huh. And it said under the caption, uh, uh, people, people try to people try to rewrite history, but I was there. I'm like, what does that got to do with me? I know what my history is. Ain't he talking about me? So I called this person back, and the person was like, nah, nah. I was like, I was like, nah. He ain't talking about me. He was like, yeah, he is talking about you. So anyway, I called Flex, right? And I said to Flex, Flex, who are you talking about? And instead of Flex saying to me, yo, kid, it was you, or it was this person, or it was anybody else, he got crazy with me on the phone. He said some crazy shit on the phone, like, yo, don't, don't, if you don't like the way I do things, don't talk to me, don't be asking me who I did this with and who that. He got crazy with me on the phone. Right? I was like, oh, you're flexing this me. Who are you talking to? Like, I'm thinking he may be in the room with maybe some people in the Hot 97 and he's trying to, like, show them that he can talk to me like that some kind of way. I don't know. But, that's what he did. Right. And the next thing you know, uh, he said he had text the uh the text messages that we had talked to each other on the net. Which uh-huh. I was like, come on, you know. You right. know that. Yeah, it's kinda crazy. But then he said I fell off. So when he said that, it was like, okay, now we gotta get that was go time. So that's when that's when the problem became. When he said I fell off. Like I fell right. off why? Because I'm not getting on anybody's nerves on the radio station every day in New right. York. Right. I'm all over, the, all over the country shaking shit up. Like, right. you don't see me every day in New York. Right. I fell off. What are you talking about? And I kept a DJ when I put my message out. Let's keep it on some DJ shit. Right. He got personal. So when he did that, that's when it got crazy. And what do you mean when you say he got personal? Because he said I fell off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like, why would you say that? That's not right. the truth. Like, why would you even put that out there? But why would you it, think that was personal? Why you even think that, that he was because you tell that to people, act, antagonize you? Because if you say that... know you ain't for... for yeah, I know that. But, it, but, but still, if you say that to people that don't know oh, about yeah, Kick Capri, they'll yeah. look at it in a negative way. Right, right, right. I didn't say anything negative. Right, I, can't, right. I didn't say nothing about your girl. Your job, I didn't right. say nothing about your friends. I said right. something to you. Let's right. battle in front of Summer Jam. Let's go right. battle for the day, battle for 100,000. So essentially, y'all would be the first verses. That would be it. Right. And I left it there, but he right. went somewhere else with it. Right. So, with that being said, it, it went where it went. But at the end of the day, the whole time, if he would have called me and said, Yo, kid, I need you in the middle of everything we were going through, right. if he would have called me and said, Yo, kid, I need you for anything, I would have been right there. Right. No matter what, it wasn't nothing personal. It was some DJ shit. It was some, and it was good for hip hop. Right. It was good for hip hop. It was dope. It lit up shit. Right. He caught a lot of pressure. Right. Because I'm not somebody that you do suck a shit to. Right. I'm not somebody that you shit on. I'm the nigga. I'm the one that opened the door for DJs to do what they doing now. I'm the one that brought the money and the fly shit to the DJ business. I'm the one that showed you how to have style and be and, and, and know your worth. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not the one you do that with. Promoters hire me all over the country. Fans come see me and sell out everywhere I go. Right. There's a reason for that because I, I, it's not just the talent. I know how to treat people. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't shit on people. There's nothing out there that says kick appreciate it on people. Did bad business. But well, what made you say you you wanted to battle for 100 grand? Because he said something first. Because he went on and said I fell off. So when he said okay. no, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. What made me say that was because he got smart with me on the phone. Okay. Instead of him saying, yo, kid, I wasn't talking about you. Oh, yeah, I was talking about you. All right, all right. But he said, yo, don't be asking what's going on on my phone, on my timeline. Don't be, you know, and if I, if I act a certain way, don't, don't call my phone no more. He's talking to me like he's son to me. Like, I ain't the one you talk to like that. All right, all right. So when he said that, that's when I put up with the post. The dog, we cool, but yo, let's do it for 100000 right. Let's do it for the name. As a matter of fact, let's just do it for the culture. We should have did it at Summer Jam. Right. And that was that. He went and got disrespectful and said some other things and then it went further. So that's how that went. But but I'm gonna say this. Funk Master Flex is a legend. Right. You can't deny what he did with Hot 97. He made that that station be the number one hip hop station in the world. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you can't take that from him. Let's make sure we don't forget that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let's not get caught up in all the other Mlocky and, and forget that. He did do that. You know what I'm saying? So shout to Funk Flex. Got love for him. Right. That right there was some hip hop shit. It's nothing personal. Okay. He's one of the greatest that ever did it. Okay, bet. That's what's up. Big yeah. up Funk Flex. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, something I was a little thrown off from uh, watching the verses mm-hmm. was um, uh, you and Scratch. Yeah. Back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get that, you know, Chris, 
I remember mean, now I call him Chris, KRS one, and Kane was going to talk their shit. We knew that part, right? Mm-hmm. We, we knew that these are the two biggest, you know, um, hip hop guys battling each other head to head. They're icons, both icons. Guys. But then you and Scratch are also icons. Mm-hmm. And at one point, like he has this routine where he's like, he, he, he's, he's, you know, Somehow, he has in Scratch. It's Scratch, yes, right. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize if I didn't make that clear. He's, he's turning the back, and then he goes, you know, sucker, you know, uh, DJ, kick a free. <laughs> and I right, yeah, yeah, you want to you wanna respond already? Like, all right. Let's start here. Good. Kane called me and asked me to do verses. I told Kane no. Right. Right? Okay. Because I didn't want to be in a battle situation. I told Kane, I said, I will do it for both of you, you and Chris together. It never been done on on verses before, so I'll do it for both of y'all. Like DJ for been, both of them? Oh, for both of them. But when he called you, he's asking you to DJ for him. For him. Okay. Right. Kane. I didn't yeah. want to be in a battle situation. Plus, me and KRS has a as much as uh Kane do, we have a big history with each other. So I, but I still didn't want to be in a battle situation. Like I told you earlier, I've been asked four times to be on Versus, turned it down. So I didn't want to be in that type of situation. So when Cade uh, asked me, I told him no. Then Chris called me maybe like an hour later and said, y'all, what you do Versus with me? I told him no. And I told him the reason why I told him no. Then he called me back an hour later and he said, yo, Cade has scratch." He was like, yo, we should do it. It's monumental. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? It's you and Kane. Cool. Get your cup. Let's do it. Yeah. Right? It's, it's bigger than me. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's about y'all. I want to see y'all get your flowers mm-hmm. and everything like that. So I left it like that. And I said, okay, but I got to call Kane, Kane back to let him know because I told him no. And I want him to feel no kind of way. So I called Kane back. Told him I'm going to do it. Like Chris wanted me to do it. And he was like, yo, please go do it with Chris. I wanted to be monumental. Da, 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 da. Went to that. I was like, you sure? He's like, yep, cool. Then he called me back. He said, what's going on with you with Scratch? Now, me and Scratch, big, cool. Wait, Kane's calling you back after you tell him no. I mean, that you're doing it with Karis One. And he's asking what's wrong with y'all? Like he knew something was... Right, happening because right. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. Hold on. Let me, so this, this is already this bubbling. Is, is let me, let me go in. Let me go in. <laughs> all right, cool. Me and Scratch been cool for a long time. We call each other all the time and all that. Like if any show I do, I put them on stage with me. When other dudes are scared to put them on stage, I put them on stage with me. Do a little routine, DJ together, all that. He started Scratch Vision. I would come to Scratch Vision, help him with Scratch Vision. Did like four shows when he came to Brooklyn. Rocked it out. He asked me to do 52 beats. I did 263 beats for him. All that. Right, and soon as I started playing music on the net, I seen a change. One day he called me and was like, "Yo, you playing music on the net? On that shit that cut off every hour?" I'm like, "And?" Then he called me another time, and he said something else that was like, "Mm." So I I let it fly. But then when it got crazy, it was when he started putting stuff on the net. He started putting stuff up there. I I remember one time I had said, "Um." I had uh, put all the far needles out first on the on the red, on the television. He put up and then you was not the first to do all the far needles. I'm like, yeah, you could have called me and said that. If I didn't know that I was the first, I didn't know. I didn't know. Like I, th- I, I never seen nobody put them up before me. But if right. I if I wasn't, you could have called my phone. We just got right. the phone with each other. You could have called me and told me that. Right. But he didn't do that. He he did that. Then the second day was the cash app thing that happened in the quarantine. He went and commented on that. Then it was something else. And it was, you know, it was something to, to where me and him would just didn't see eye to eye and I just wasn't fucking with Scratch for whatever. And then we came to the battle, to the uh, versus thing. And when the versus thing came up, he took it upon himself to try to take the shot off of me to put on him, which that wasn't a good idea. Because first of all, I came there with good intent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's not about me. It's about Kane and Chris. It wasn't about me. Right. So when he did what he did, he made it about him. Right. I got sucker free clothing line, right. right? I came up there with a Gucci shirt. It was so much not about me that I wore a Gucci shirt. I didn't wear something that I could have wore to the world for everybody to see. Right, right, right. You see what I'm saying? So I don't really like talking about this because I don't like blowing nobody up, but he did. He put it out there first. He did it first. So... Uh, for him to do that, it was like, I'm not somebody you do that for. Listen, watch this. 
You can take my career and take my talent and take all my abilities, put it to the left. There's nothing out there that says Kid Capri shitted on people. There's nothing out there that says Kid Capri did bad business with people. There's nothing out there that says Kid Capri wronged people. So right there, you lose. I'm not the person you do that to. Whatever your intentions were, whatever you feel like you needed to do, I'm not the one you do that to. Whatever your thoughts were, they calling me world's greatest DJ. They give me the attention I get. I do as many shows as I do. Whatever that is, that's something that God has placed in my life. That's not, that's not nothing that somebody else can mm -hmm. take away or beat because you get in front of a camera and feel like you're going to shit on me and this is your opportunity. Right. So right there, you lose. Because of those facts, because I have no smut on my name, you can't win. And then I'm the shit on top of that. <laughs> you know when I get on that stage, my pressure's gonna be different. I don't give a fuck if you got sparks flying off your turntables. I don't give a fuck what you do on stage. Kid Capri hits that stage, it's gonna be an event. And that's worldwide. That's wherever I go. And that's the truth. And that's God given. That's not me bragging. That's what it's been for years. There's no downtime. So I didn't understand why he took that opportunity to do that on that platform because it didn't work. And did y'all speak afterwards? No, there's nothing to really talk about. Instead of him saying to me, yo, kid, I apologize for what I did. That was wrong. I should have did that. He go on the net and he puts a video out saying that the rhyme that I said was for Kane, which it wasn't. It was for you. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? You got your timelines mixed up? It was for you. Wait, what you hit? You said a rhyme? I said a rhyme. I said a rhyme. Uh -huh, but I, I, stopped, I stopped the rhyme because it wasn't about me. Right. I didn't mess up. I didn't stutter. Or nothing. I stopped the rhyme because it wasn't about me. And I said, you know what? And to myself, while I'm saying it, it's not about you, kid. Just stop it. Stop right. it. Right. He said that it was about Kane, which it wasn't. Then he said, Kid Capri doesn't want DJs to shine. That's why he takes DJs on the road with him. Well, isn't that making DJ shine? Like oh, technician yeah. and kid do it. If yeah. I'm taking them on the road and paying them all this money and they going to see the, 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 the country and they get in front of these crowds, ain't that making them shine? It's because I didn't take you on the road with me. You don't need to go on the road with me. You scratch. But why would you say that? You try to put the narrative out there like I should. Look, you could never, ever question what I've done for the DJ business. Ever. Nobody cared. As far as, you know what? You can never question what I did for music, period. When I did something for the way you make me feel mixed with the impeach the president, that changed the R&B game. That changed the R. You now had to make rhyme. R&B artists had to make records over R&B, over a breakbeat records like Mary. Yeah, that was like, that was crazy. It changed the whole game. So you cannot, you cannot front on what I did for the game. And on top of that, I stay with my ear to the street. I stay with my ear to everything that's going on. That's why my album that's out right now sound the way it does. Because I, I refuse to be last. I refuse to let somebody tell me I'm less dead. I refuse. But, 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 but let, me, let me stop you for one second. What made you not want to react back like when he... Like, cause, I believe, because what he was trying to do, in my opinion, and I was, I'm an outsider looking in, obviously, he was like, you know, suck a DJ. That was like what we used to say back in the days. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like just battling. Just, but but just, I know, like, anybody who was new probably couldn't comprehend that. What made you want to keep your cool and not say, you know, something Because back? I did, if you see my show at the beginning of the verses, you see I tore the, the, the Barclays to shreds. You see right. that. Right. There's nothing to talk about after that. Right. I came to do an assignment. They asked me to do an assignment, and that's what I'm going to do. It's not about me. It's about right. KRS right. and Chris. And it's Kane. not about me. And Kane. Right. Okay. This is not the, the, the chance for me to put the shine on me. This mm -hmm. is about me trying to help my dudes get what they deserve. That's what my intentions were right. when I came. I could have came there with something set up to go against Scratch. was it about that. But you knew at one point that he was going to do that. No. Thing. The, the, no, just, I had no idea you, Because you before the show started I wow. came up to the stage And said, yo, Scratch I love you We don't see eye to eye right now But we got to get back to it And I walked away from it No balance in my heart Nothing wrong So when I went to my dressing room I, Somebody, somebody stage, comes back to, Somebody comes to my dressing room And say, yo, Scratch is garbage up there I'm Like, what are you talking about? So I go to look at Scratch And Scratch is playing All the records that he don't play That I play 
He must have looked at one of my shows or something, and he's playing all the records that I play in a row. Then he played my Ben and Stretch record. Which Why would you do that? Why would you do that? What you want there? You get one of your old version of that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Why would you do that? Like, so right there, I knew some sucker shit was going on. Wow. So I'm looking at it, I'm that. like, damn, that's how he do it? And the crowd is at a standstill. I said, okay. So I go on stage and now I ignite this place. And now he had to stand there and watch me destroy. You play the same records? No, no, no. I, it was none of that shit was in my list of what we oh, were okay, gonna play. Okay, okay. That's why I was bugged out to me. Like, right. why would he do it? He was gonna block me or so I didn't understand what he was doing. Right, right. So then when I go on stage and I ignite this shit. And both of y'all warming up, folks. This is y'all warming he's up. He's on yeah. before me. And I okay. said, let me go on versus first. Let me get everything. Crazy, he could come in after do his trick shit, do all his shit, make it about the show. Right. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to go first right. because he wanted. To, he thought I was playing these records, so he thought he was going to throw me off. Now, one of those records was in the list of what I was playing, right. but I seen the sucker shit. So now he did that. The crowd standing around looking at him like, "Yo, what he doing?" And then I come up and ignite it. Wow. And then they, and he had to stand there and watch that. Then he had to stand there and watch how I was playing the music for KRS amongst how he was playing the music for K. Wow. Then KRS kills him. Stay in your place. Another man tells me to stay in my place. We're going to fight. On stage. Right? Mm. Right. Then the man that you back it up tells you, nah, we ain't doing that. He shits on you. Yeah, that was a little, that was crazy. Yeah. Wait, say then again, you go. Say again, then, say again. I'm sorry. Kane, what? Kane yeah. was like, nah, nah. We, he shits so on scratch. Like, yo, nah, he we ain't doing him that. From, from doing yeah. right. Well, and we, then, doing what happened? I'm, I'm, let's, let's, let's be particular because everyone's watching this. Watch the verses. So let's say what happened. Let's say I forgot. Scratch was gonna go in and do like a whole thing that was. I'm assuming was going at. Right. Right. But Kane was like, nah, nah, yeah. nah. He because right. you know, nah. And this is the dude that you backing up. Then the right. ad didn't sell the injury. You disrespect the dude that's down with your camp and tell the dude, Drez, that's from Dice Effects, yo, I know you ain't been on the stage in a long time, but get off the stage. Who are you to tell that man that? That's KRS and Chris um, guests. Wait, who said that? Scratch said that to, no. to Drez. Oh, yeah? He said that to Drez. Look at the show. Look at it. I know you ain't been on the stage in a long time, but who? But get off the stage. I know you ain't been on the microphone in a long time, but get off the stage. Who are you to tell that man that? And this is a man that was down with your camp. Right. Das effects, yeah. red on red man. Yeah, you know, like, squad, how do you tell squad, that right? man that? He made it so much about him that this is what he said to that man oh. in front of the world. Right. I don't even like talking about this. I don't even like when people ask me about it because it's not something that I want to get off. But y'all asking, and right. this is what it was. This is what it is. We're going to put the narrative out the way it is and control your own narrative. I'm going to let y'all know that now. Yeah. Like Game said the other day, yeah. control your own well, narrative. You from Kanye. Kanye. Yeah, there it is. Don't, yeah. let nobody, don't let nobody think no kind of way about you because somebody said it or put, sorry, trying to probably put some kind of display on you or you get mad at somebody because they mad at you. You a sucker if you mad at somebody because somebody else is mad at you or feel some kind of way about you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's what it is. And he did that on the world stage. He got caught up in being in that arena and forgot those cameras was in his face. And my thing was, why would you do that to me? Right. I'm not the dude to do that to. Right. Right. I help people. You know, anytime you need me, I'm there. I've been there for you, Scratch, many, many times. I asked you to come be there for me. You haven't been there once. Wow. To teach me the NPC, I asked you to teach me to come do my, my internet show. You never came once. Every time you asked me to be there, I've been there. Shouting your shit on my radio show, Scratch Vision and all that. But you said you said something important earlier. You said that um when you reached out to when Kane reached out to you, he asked you, Well, what's what's going on with you and Scratch? Because I told Scratch, I don't we Kane that uh Kane um after Kane asked me to after I called Kane back and told him I was gonna do it with Chris. He called me back 30 seconds later. He was like, yo, what's going on with you and Scratch? I don't even know how, I don't remember how he knew, but then I told him, I was like, yo, this is what happened. He was like, yo, do me a favor, man. You know, just let it go. I said, you know what? Kid shit on me three times. Usually a nigga get away with that one time, but that's it. I was like, you know what, Kane? It's about y'all. It's about y'all. It's cool. Now let's keep it f very funky. Had I told Scratch or had I told Kane that I was going to do it, Scratch wouldn't even been on the show. KRS wouldn't have got him. So he wouldn't even been on the show. So for him to go on there and say the rhyme I was going with was about K, it was like, come on, B. This your opportunity to take, to try to shit on me in front of the world, really? Why would you do that? Me and you would do that, be on the phone every other day. 
But it shows you that you never know where it's going to come from first. And it's nothing new. I've been going through this shit forever. I put out soundtrack to the streets with Jay and Nas and this one. And DJs wouldn't play my records on the album. On the record, you was on the album. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't play my records on the radio. Because they don't want to see Kid Capri get no further. Kid got hard, kid got big. And it's stupid because you DJs, I'm saying this shit to you. Let me go to where the cab at. Yeah, yeah. Say it to your cab. Yeah, yeah. You (laughs) DJs, you trip over... Playing everybody's record that don't give a shit about you. Mm. You trip over dudes that you you go crazy over playing this one's record and that one. They don't even call to see if you healthy, mm. if you ate, if you good, anything. But somebody that's in your business that do the same thing that you do and is trying to get the same struggle go off the same way you are in a DJ business, you won't support them. You won't play their music because you think it's taken away from you. You dumbass. All of you are dumbasses that think that way. Word. All of you got something to say, see me. Mm. All of you are dumbasses that think that way. Smarten up. If I blow up, you blow up. If you open the door for me, you blow up. You open the door for yourself, for the DJ to go and be better. And that's what my whole shit always been. Right. It always been that. So why would you hate on the album, soundtrack to the streets? Why would you hate on anything I put out, you dumbass? Mm. Take it how you take it. Mm. Now you're right. They should see that supporting themselves. If they support a fellow DJ, they support things that they might do in the future. So now I did this album, The, the Love. And regardless of it, DJ played or nobody playing, my shit is dope. Good. I sound better than a lot of you rappers. Nah, it is pretty and dope. I don't even do it. I don't you even got rap. your shot ready? I think it's time for a shot. It's time for a shot. Yeah, I think it's time for a shot. I ain't gonna lie. You was talking your shit. I'm talking about shit. It's time yeah, to talk yeah, yeah. shit. We all drink champs. I'm talking shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's talk that's shit. Right. It's time to take a piss too, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take a shot first. All right, cool. <laughs> Yo, yeah. I literally stood for so six look, hours. So if oh Jay didn't stand up for taking a piss, I wasn't standing up to take a piss. Oh, I'm taking a piss. <laughs> I did not take a piss. I had Jay Z loose the other day. Is that right? Yeah, he came to see me. He Last was, party I did for Jay, I did his Oscar party. I never seen Jay the dance. The gold Oscar party? In L.A. The gold one. Right. Okay, yes. I never seen him. He somewhat invited us. He's I like, never seen him dance before. Someone, you know, I don't get invited to shit like that. You know what I mean? I never <laughs> seen him dance before. Right. He danced for like a long time with Beyonce. He was dancing. Right. It was crazy. I, right. I never seen that. Right. To see that was bugged out. I see um, Kanye big you up too in the, in the documentary. Yeah, yeah, he sure yeah, did. Yeah, he, yeah. He put me in the bar. Yeah, what was the bar? What was the bar? He said something with the kick Capris. He said, mm. "Is she somebody in the kick?" I don't know. They always put me in the bar. But thank you. Shout out, yeah. shout to Chilla Jones too. He did, 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 did a dope joint. Right, battle rap joint. So, right now, this, and I want you to be clear. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite party? The white boy parties where the girls whip out windows, they show the titties. <laughs> the black parties, old school parties, new school parties. If you, if God said, "Listen, you got one party to do to get to heaven," the party that has young and old together, everybody together. What party is that called? Whatever party that is, my 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 it's radio. Not spring break because old niggas don't go to spring break no more. Right, well, you know the thing is, a, a lot of older people don't party with the younger people, and the younger right. people don't party with the older people. But then in, in my parties, it be like that. You right. see, younger and older together, they all have a good time because my whole thing always been a balance. Even if you listen to my radio show, it's called the Black Party, mm. Kick and Priest Block Party. A mm. Black Party, you go to a Black Party, right? Everybody is different ages. They right. dress different, Kids, live different. It's cotton candy and yeah, nobody, nobody's on the same separated. Block. Everybody have a good time. Cotton candy and heroin is on the same. It's on the same block. shit. Yeah, yes, yes. And that's what I'm on. I'm on the yeah. same balance. Right. I play the new shit better than the new than the right. young DJ. Right. So it, I don't lose my mm. ear because I get older. Mm. I stay in it. Listen to my album, The Love. You can mm. tell right there. Right. And you did it on your own. I did the whole album, produced the whole album, wrote the whole album, did the Ask No Mainstream artists to get on it. Mm-hmm. I got my daughter, Vina Love. I got Let Mr. Lex, the uh, reggae artist, and I got Lavelle, R.I.B. artist. That's mm-hmm. it. I could have asked anybody to be on my joint. I just started doing it on my own. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying on your own, no label. Well, I produced it, I wrote it, and it's on my label, and it's going through Empire. Oh, okay. Big up to Ghazi. Let's make some yeah, noise shout to Ghazi. Ghazi. Yeah, shout out to Ghazi. So what, what made you want to do that? 
did everything I could do with this DJ business. I did it all. You know what I'm saying? I sat in the quarantine and I watched a lot of sucker shit going on. Mm. Right? Dudes that was standing in front of a Maybach before the quarantine talking about they getting money. Soon as the quarantine hit, five days later, they begging for cash apps. It was in the Yo, Honda send $50 to my cash app. Yo, send $20 to my cash app. We're talking about DJs. Yeah. I ain't gonna find I send a lot of cash apps. Right. You sent a lot of cash apps? Right, but, but, but... DJ Envy would send me the link, and I'd just be like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's the shit. Yeah. But, but, what? That, but, yeah. but, it's a difference. For it's DJs, there's... Oh, for DJs, DJ Envy, not Envy for DJ himself. Envy, no, not for Envy. No. But DJ Envy, like a, a new DJ. I mean, a lot, I mean, a lot, a lot of... You're right. A lot, yeah. of, the, yeah, a lot of the DJs that like, relied on club business were, weren't surviving. Wait, right. wait a minute. It's a difference when people want to send you money because you're working. Right. Put your little pin up there. Working, opposed to you turning around every five minutes asking for a cash app. Yo, who can send me fifty dollars of my cash app in two minutes? Yo, send me twenty dollars of my cash app. It sounds like we begging. That's yeah, that's a new it's era. It like we begging. That's new era shit. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but here's my thing. The quarantine happened five days ago. You doing bad already? Right. <laughs> Don't try to hit me with the bullshit. You do a bad already? Yeah. You taking advantage of people in their misery. Yeah, That's what you're doing. I ain't think of it like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're trying to use that excuse to do it. Like you like wasn't that. doing bad in five days. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> what are you talking to? <laughs> so, with that being said, I was oh, on the net the for three years. must have been crazy. I was on the net for three years. Never mm. asked for a dollar. Mm-hmm. I made no Panty Sunday t shirts to sell to people, and they sold out, and I never sent them to them. Never took their money. Right. Because I felt guilty taking money from people that... The right. reason why I did it was because promoters and fans sell out my joints. P- promoters had me come around the country, around the world, and fans come and sell it out. I felt like this is my way of giving something back. Mm. This is my... Give it to a free... Like, I see a place. Mm. This is my way of giving something back to them. Like, yo... You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when I seen, not that they were getting money, because if you burn an electricity, you work it, people should want to pay you and say, yo, here, yo, you entertaining me? Yo, let me send you some bread. Right. That's dope. Right. But the narrative changed when you turn around in people's misery, yo, let me see you can send me $50 of my cash app. And you say you a D, you call yourself a DJ. This is something that took care of me my whole career. It makes right. us look like we thirsty. Right. I got promoters watching this shit. Right. Promoters looking at I ain't pay these niggas what they want. Right. They were here begging for money. So it looked crazy to me. And I stood on it. I said what I said. And at first, people didn't understand it until they got on my live and they understood it. And I even told them, I said, yo, IG is letting us rock. They let us play music. We ain't supposed to be doing this shit. They let us do it because of the situation. Right. But now you over here asking for money, we're going to get cut off. And that's exactly what happened. It started getting cut off. Oh, yeah, because right. if Mariah Carey looks at, your, at her shit and she say, yo, they playing my music all over here. They're going to be like, yeah, how long have they been playing it? Let's go back to the videotape. See how long it's been going on? Okay, yeah. And they cut you off. That's what happened. I didn't want that to happen. Right. I was off for three years on there. Never had a problem. Yeah, because then they got their pins, and their pins are saying cash app, some shit like that. It wasn't the pin. It okay. was them saying it. It was okay. like so they, they were, were begging it. Because for Because D-Nice, it. D-Nice. He didn't do the cash app. He didn't say it one time. He didn't say, yo, yeah. send money to Mel Cash. No. He put his pin up, that's it. Yeah. Right. And he was somebody like myself that could have got a big, big, big bag had he had turned around and said, yo, send money to my cash app. Regardless if it looked cheesy or not, he could have did that and blew up. I would have said he didn't have to do guy. that. He didn't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was one of the things I was mad at Scratch at. Right. Because Scratch, when I put that post up, Scratch went under my comment, before you say something about me, D, nice, and that's and that's taking cash apps with your narcissistic ways and whoop de whoop de whoop. I wasn't even talking about y'all. Wait, I wasn't wait, even thinking you're going that too I was fast, saying. Going on time. So what? That's, that's what he that's said. What the, on the web. That's what the problem was. IG, under my comment. And that's what Big Daddy came with. And he could have called to. me. And he said this shit about comedy. I wasn't even talking about them. I'm talking about <laughs> niggas that wasn't DJs. All right, all right. That was doing this shit. That was making the business that me and you scratch are in. Right. That make us look like we thirsty. Right. Like you supposed to be on my side. Right. Instead, you took this opportunity to put the attention on yourself right. and shit on me because I'm standing up for something that's right. right. When you could have called me. I didn't understand that. Like, so... That was my stance. I remember Mr. C called me. He was like, more than that, he's like, yo, you a thousand percent right at what you said. He said, but more than that, he said, I have a different way of looking at it. He said, these are the same dudes that were standing in front of a Maybach talking about they get money as soon as the shit happened. They begging for cash apps. Mm-hmm. 
That's where I got it from. That's in the, the truth. In the name of the DJ. Huh? In the name of the DJ. They exactly. And it made us look like we thirsty. Like, like we. it was nobody else doing No actors, no... Nobody else. It was right. just the DJs, and it made us look like we're not doing good. But was these same guys asking for this cash app? Were they entertaining on Instagram during the yes, pandemic? Yes, they were. Some I mean, motherfuckers they, put cash app and don't do shit. They wasn't even doing shit. Standing there and talking works. shit, running their mouth. Yeah, you're right. That's right. Yeah. They, talking this shit. It wasn't even doing nothing. They were just right. taking advantage of people's misery. Damn. At the time, it was going on, and that's what I had a problem with. And the only reason why I said something and had a problem with it, because I was doing it before goddamn quarantine came up. I was doing it for three years mm, before right. the quarantine came. Mm. Two shows a week, every week, never asked somebody for a dime. So yeah, we in this situation, yeah, right. I know you, but there's a classy way of doing things. If you need it, yo, I'm up here DJ. you see me playing, come see me tomorrow. If you like me when this shit opens up, have me come do your wedding. Have me come do your... Right. That's a classy way of doing things. It's like, it's a certain way you do it. We, people take advantage of everything. Somebody said hookah one day and everybody started smoking fucking hookah. You don't even know who hookah is. <laughs> In Europe, they call it sea shot. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks Bats. for that tidbit. Bats. <laughs> well, the shot. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, that's what my problem was. But I'm not, I, I'm not opposed to people getting paid. Like, if people want to send you money or whatever, yeah, hell yeah, they should. You up there burning electricity, you working. Hell yeah, they should. They should do it now. If you right. up there doing entertainment, send money to them and let them work. But the way they were doing it just made us look real cheesy. It made us look crazy. And I felt like I had to say something. So I thought Scratch would have my back. And right. it went the other way. It went the other way. No more cash back. Now we got to take our cash app link off of our link tree. <sighs> now we don't got time for <laughs> No, she got real. She got real. So have you ever, like, um, did a party? These people will just come up to you and want you to play what they want to hear? Yeah. It'd be usually drunk people. It'd That's be a drunk. jukebox It'd shit. be females. <laughs> It'd usually be females that get drunk. Okay. Like one time, there's someone in that this chick, uh, she was with a man, and she's banging on the side. I don't really be in booths, but it was a spot that only had a booth. There was no space that it to be set up at. But he banged, she's banging the booth. Yo, play some Jamaican music. Banging the booth. Was she Jamaican? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped the music. Like, play yo. some Jamaican music. <laughs> like, yo, are you, are you like, fucking, fucking crazy or something? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, and I got out of, but I also offered her a drink, I offered a man a drink, you know. Uh. But yeah, you go through that sometimes. I don't really go through it because when you keep people occupied, they don't think to say that. It's when you're not doing your job, somebody comes up and says, yo, can you play this and play that? Because they're, they're bored. Right. That only happens when they're bored. Mm. That's why you got to keep everybody on their toes. You got to keep everybody excited at one time so this way they will never feel like they have to do that. Right. They really have no right because if you work... Anyway, I'm not coming to your job and tell you how to do your job. Right, so right. why you feel like you should come up and tell me how to do Miles or any other DJ? That's what their job is right. to do. But in their mind, they paid the cover fee, and that's paying your fee, too. They th yeah, they think that you're the mariachi band, that they want right. to hear all the songs. But they also pay the cover fee to a movie theater. Right. They're not coming over there telling the guy right. when to show the movie. You right. see what I'm saying? Like, it, you, but they do tell the police, I pay your motherfucking taxes. Well, they should. Yeah. Because a lot of police... Some do their job. I know a lot of great policemen, but there's policemen that got their ass whipped when they were young, just like TSA dudes at the airport. They got their ass whipped when they were young. The girls didn't find them attractive, and they mad. They grew up mad, so they got a badge, and they want to take that shit out on people that, you know, you know, yeah. you know, you can see who that is. Yeah, but you can't confuse that with people interfering when the cops are doing their regular job and jumping into the mix. Yeah, that's, I, the, I, that's the equivalent of going up to the DJ booth. That's, that's equivalent. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm comparing it to. Yeah, both is wrong. Both is wrong. Yeah. Like coming and saying, "Hey man, I want to hear, ain't no half stepping." <laughs> <laughs> And you like you in the middle of <laughs> no, you be like you better get you in the middle of, you in the middle of Chief Keith and young niggas come up to you man I mean old niggas come up to you man I want to hear ain't no half stepping you don't know which one it is which ain't no Yo, half just stepping. to stop and talk to someone that comes to the DJ is a fucking vibe killer but what if I know the DJ 
Even yes. worse. Even worse if you know the DJ. Really? See, what people don't understand, if I'm in a certain place, if a DJ is in a certain place and he's doing a certain thing, you can't as a person that, as a, as a customer, come up to say, yo, let me stop, just let, yo, do this. He may not be in that area. But you as a as a person that's not a DJ or somebody that's not an entertainer, you're not thinking that way. You're just thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about the bigger picture, which is and they the think crowd. about Burger King, have it their way. Exactly. This is right. not Burger King. Hey, this is not Burger King. This right. is, this is yeah. I got to satisfy all... See, if people thought... See, here's the thing. People want the, the, the end result. They don't care what happened before the end result. And that is, I got to deal with getting dressed, packing my clothes. I got to deal with getting to the airport. I got to deal with possibly losing my stuff. I got to deal with asshole TSA that feel like they want to be cops. I got to deal with lateness. I got to deal with back losing in the days, my bags. Crates, crates back in the days. Right. I got to deal with losing my bags. I got to right. deal with getting there. Then I got to deal with getting to the, checking the hotel, getting something to eat, doing sound check, coming back to get dressed, all these different things before I do a party to be in front of you. They don't care about They don't know none of that. Right. All they know is, was he good at the party? Right. That's all they care about. Right. The same way it goes vice versa. Those people pay to get there in a car. If they don't have a car, they got a podcast or whatever, how they got to get there. They get there. They pay to get in. They got to buy clothes to, to look fly to, to be at the party. Once they get in, they got to buy drinks. They do all this because you're in the building. How do you not give them the best you can give them? So it works both ways. Mm. You see what I'm saying? The bottom line is the end result. People want to be entertained. It's, a, it's your job to entertain them. They don't care about anything that happened before that, even though they sh they probably should if they knew what you went through to go. Right. You done shows. You know. You know me. Yes. Hell yeah. Right. You know what your preparation was yes. before you went yes. to go hit that stage. Yes. Right. I don't and really, you did I don't it. Really prepare. I'm, I'm a foul nigga. You're, 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 <laughs> well, I just go in. You prepare your own way. You prepare your own way. I've been around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know what I mean? How do you well, I, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Whether there was 14 people there or 40,000 people there, if they had fun, I had fun. That's True. it. That's, that's, that's I, it. I, I really but the whole less. preparation of everything that to make that happen is right. something that people don't care. They pay their ticket, right. entertain me. If you're not good, I'm going to get on the net and talk about how bad your ass was. Right. right. Even if it ain't your fault. Right. Bad equipment, bad sound man. Yeah, they blame it all on you. It's you. Right. It's not the promoter, it's not the sound man, it's you. If you ain't mm. did what I paid my money for, I'm gonna right. get that show ass. Right. So imagine doing that and you got 250 shows every year. Right. Every year you doing this constantly and never get no bad reports. Did you say you got 250 shows? I was doing 250 shows. It went down to 200, and then I told my manager, Christy Clifford, which is an incredible manager, I told her, we have, to, we, have to, we have to slow down. I just want to do weekends. I can't do all these dates that are covered at me. At one point, know, 250. I used to do shows with Lee. Yeah, Lee's Lee? dad because Mr. Lee's dad because dad Lee was performing with him. Yeah. Was a drug dealer or when he was down? No, he, uh, okay. I don't know. He probably was both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> Mr. Lee was doing a gymnastics routine on stage. <laughs> and then I, I, down here in Miami, right. I started doing cameo and I got me a crib. I bought me a crib. Now, I remember you had Luke's when you performed at Luke's. Luke's, I was doing Luke's. I did Woo! like three or four Luke's That shorts. shit was off the chain. When I started doing cameo, I bought a crib down. I got a crib down here on 12th of Collins. I had the crib for nine years. Was you doing ecstasy at that time? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't do ecstasy. Right. It just felt like ecstasy time. Ecstasy? No, no, no. no. It just felt like... Hey, <laughs> with, with Mr. Lee? Mr. Lee like, kicking free? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Lee kicking free and ecstasy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to win you. Did you get that shit was going on out here? I ain't gonna fight it. was going on. It's still going on. But, you know, being on the road that much... Yo, I had to calm it down. I was like, yo, let me, I gotta just do the weekends now because it was just too much. It was too much. And I wanted to do other things. So when the pandemic happened, I got a chance to, because I've been on the road from 88 to the pandemic. Jesus. If I took off two months within that time, accumulated together, that's a long time. I've been on the road forever. So when the pandemic happened, I had a chance to sit down and focus on other shit. I had other things that I wanted to do. Those aspirations, right? Right, so that's how I did this album, The Love. 
I did four other albums, I did three other albums besides that. I did one album called Top Tier before this. I started that album like four years ago with all the battle rappers. I never put it out because music kind of changed. And I said, you know what? Let me just hold off on it and get back to it. So when I did this album, I went back to the Top Tier album while I was doing this album and re we updated the top tier album. So I did that. I did an album on a group called The Hoodies. You might see The Hoodies on the net mm. doing their thing. I just finished the album on them. Produced their joint. I got an artist called Foo. So I did another album on myself. So I did four albums. I did two cartoons on one of the, car- one of the characters on the Proud Family cartoon that's mm. coming back out. And then I did my old cartoon. I did a movie called Mr. Every Ever or me. I'm 95% done on that. I opened up my Cold Eye Sucker Free and we opened up East Coast Capital Realty. I did all this in the pandemic. All this was done in the pandemic. So Jazz, she has East Coast Capital. um, And we did all this in the pandemic. So when the album came out, it was because you could it was because I needed something else. I needed just the time to sit down and and focus. That's why the album sounded the way it does, because I had a chance to sit down and realize what I was doing. Being on the road it was, I even lost 40 pounds. Because being on the road, even if you exercise every night, you still eat every night after right. the show, so you don't get a chance to catch up on yourself. Mm. I lost 40 pounds in, 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 in a pandemic. So it, as much as it was a bad thing for a lot of people, it was pretty good for me because of these reasons. Mm. You know, and I got a chance to get it off. Mm. Yeah, somebody needed to, a lot of people needed to be still for a second. That's what the pandemic needed did. Needed to sit down. Right. So when is Kid Capri book coming out? I've been I've been working on the movie. Uh, we, a movie. A biopic, huh? A biopic. The movie is cinematic. Wait till you see this shit. It look incredible. So it's ninety five percent. The movie first or the book first? It's going to be the movie first. I'll probably do the book after. Yeah, niggas usually do it first. I know. No, that's dope. Yeah. Let them go. That's fine. That's I know. Fine. I always do things a little yeah. awkward. Yeah, that's fine. So the movie first. Then, cause yeah. I read Malcolm shit. Then I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it don't have. There's no rules to production. That's true. Ah, no there's no rules. There's always shit in the book that's not in the movie. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Because with a movie, even with like, like you take a, like you take a, any movie. You take James Brown movie. Get on up. Big yeah. Jagger. Big Jagger did get on up, but he also did the documentary, which is Mr. Dynamite, mm-hmm. right? Things that have missed the dynamite is not in Get On Up because Get On Up, you only have a certain amount of time to tell a story. You don't have a lot of time in the movie. Good. So a lot of things get left out, a lot right. of things get cut off. That's why documentary is so important and that's why people love documentaries so much. Yep. Unsung and all these things because it tells, it tells the rise and the fall. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's so dope. So with this documentary I did, it's called Mr. Every Ever. And Mr. Every Era. Mr. Every uh, Era. Like Mr. Everything, but Every right, Era. Right, Every okay. Era. I've been through I heard Every Era. like you had a Latino last name, Mr. Every Era. Ah, oh, that's Derry. I'm like, let me find out, you Dominican. That's very racist, <laughs> really. I like the Black racism. Black and Italian. <laughs> yeah, right, so, Mr. Every Era shows a lot of stuff, and when we brought it to certain companies, I don't want to say the names, but when we brought it to certain companies, they said, yo, your story is too long, kid, to do a movie, so we need to do six parts. Fire. So... That's what we're doing right now. So it's a six-part documentary, docu-series. Well, it's been well. We put it together. We're going to put it down as six parts because the story is too long. About uh, it's, it's too long. It's too much things to talk about. No, and it needs not. Nah, it needs to be that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He worked with Ryan Carey too, right? Did you, you, I didn't work with a. I did. Um, we were cool, but I never never. Never DJ for. Mm-hmm. Who was the wildest person? I'm gonna tell you the first person I did a party. I'm gonna tell you who I did a party with. The first party. Mm-hmm. Martha Stewart. What? Yeah. I did Martha Stewart first party. First. Oh, her first party. Her first like hip hop party. It was your first party. Her first hip hop party. I did Martha Stewart. I did a party. This is when she came home, or this is before she went. This to was jail? this was she. Because that is she came, came home. She came like, that's a crazy. Thing. She comes home with yeah. hip hop. I think she came home first. And she, yeah, she, she already and I had did that. I did a party at Donald Trump's house. <laughs> Okay, this is this is pre-racial Donald Trump. Yeah, I did a party pre, pre-president Donald Trump's, Trump's house. This is before he this is before he became um Yeah, yeah. A foul yeah, yeah. Y'all. Before he became all that, I, yeah. I did a party at Donald Trump's house. I did Eddie Murphy, I did okay, let's Spike not, Lee. Let's, not, let's, stay, let's stay on Trump house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, where's Trump house at? It's Florida. That okay. shit look like you need West a helicopter Paul? to get around. Right. Um, Je- Jeffrey Epstein shit is that? Jeffrey Epstein. I, I don't know. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein shit. His, yeah. his, his Them niggas Florida. had little Ray Allen. Yo, uh, man. Ray I mean, Allen. You're right, but <laughs> 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 diverting. <laughs> 
I definitely I didn't mean to say it like that. But hey, all right. So you went to Donald Trump house. How was it looking? All right. Was His it? shit crazy. Right. You look like you need a uh, matter of fact. The room that we was in, everything was solid gold. Pitches, forks, knives. This shit was gold. He was president before he was. This before he was president. When he still hanging out with Russell, me, Venus, the the Williams sisters, tennis. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was uh pretty big, pretty dope. I want to ask you how much did Trump pay, but I don't want. It's a lot, bro. It's nice. It would have been funny if you would say he didn't pay. No, no, Trump pants, lah. Oh, Trump got shit. the whole country Trump paid. Bread, Trump bro. paid the whole country. Trump makes somebody else pay. Trump got the PPB loans lit. You think the war would have happened? You think this war would have happened if Trump was still in office? Why? 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 Would you think? I'm asking. I don't know. I don't, I don't think. I don't think our side had anything to do. Like we wouldn't have controlled. But you think, think he would have stopped it? Let's he, be clear. I don't let's think be clear. so. This is some real. I know what you're saying. And, and, and this is some real hood shit. Nigga like, yo, man, them niggas don't got no army no more. Let me just go invade them niggas. Like, that sounds like some street shit, though. Like, don't You're talking real. about Putin thinking that. Yeah, like, Putin, like, they ain't really lit like that no more. I'm going to just go take over their shit. You, what's, what's not hood about that? You know, you know like, the only thing I street about that? I, I'm, like, not, I'm not a fan of, of Trump, to be honest with you. But right. the only reason I would say that maybe it would have been a thought not to do it is because Trump was so wild. That maybe Putin be like, yeah, I don't know. This guy, we can't predict what this guy's going to do. Ain't nobody wild in this motherfucker, so I might as well not do it, right? Who, Trump? Yeah, because yeah. Trump would say crazy shit. Like, he told, Listen, he told North Korea, yo, we're going to burn your shit down. At least Trump came outside every day. Like, Biden, where he at? He needs to. <laughs> he needs man. Yo, he needs a doctor, bro. He needs a vehicle. But, yo, listen, I'm not, I'm not a fan of neither. But I tell no, you I'm one not a fan thing. of neither, either, bro. I'll tell you one thing. Trump came outside. And was nah, like, nah, but Trump was talking a little crazy, bro. Trump I can't, had I can't COVID take, and came outside. I can't take the way, talk, the, the way <laughs> Trump talked. That nigga had a COVID. He's like, y'all got COVID. He's taking his mask off. <laughs> like, what, what are we going to do with the microphones, Mr. President? Like, he, aren't you speaking COVID into the microphone? That's how you know he would but, live. But Trump is crazy. I think he bigged up Putin. He's like, yo, shout him out for what he's doing right Listen, now. Listen, Kanye bigged up Putin. Putin no, nah, no, not for what he's doing right now. Oh, for no. Trump Relax. Picked up for what he's doing right now. I think now. Trump said he big him up. He said something like, "I respect it." He said something like that. I respect him for it. This is political. We never really talk about shit like this on Trigger. This is what you bring here, Kicker Bree. I'm sorry. You man. got us over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. No Before we, I don't know if we get out of here or not, but yes. I want to talk about your history of Big L. Um, was it strictly because of Columbia Records? Was it was it the Harlem Connect? Nah, me and Big L was cool. You know, I was cool with DITC. D- D- Absolutely. So, yeah, and um, they asked me to just do the, to put it on record. I was just doing it. But I used to go down there to go see Big Al just on random, just hang out down there. I used to tell Big Al, I was like, yo, L, you a big, you, 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 you about to be something, man. I was like, yo, you know what? I understand you got your boys, you love your boys out here and everything, but you got to stay off the street corner, man. You got to stay off the street corner. He used to be outside all the time. Right. And I used to just drive down there and just hang out with him. I just tell him, like, yo, you know, like. This is before the records that you, that you use on the record, his single? Well, this is after people put it on. I just okay. tell him, like, you know, like, you just, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, just try to be low, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just stay out the way. Like, you know, just go and, and do your records, just do your stuff. But, you know, L was so cool. He was just so good. It, it, like, if you listen to the way he robbed, when you met him, it was a total opposite. It In was, what way? The way he robbed, he robbed like, like he'll chop your head off. Right. right. But so when you met smoking? him, he was just a subtle, cool dude, like just a little fly little dude. Like, it wasn't like he was. He wasn't rah rah. Nah, nowhere right. near. It's like he was just cool. So, I used to tell him, like, dog, like, I know these your boys, everybody's cool, everybody, you know, I know all that, but like, try to be in the house, right, do your shoot. It's 420, by the way. Exactly 420. Stay out the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, just try to stay out the way. And um, unfortunately, what happened happened, man. And um, it wasn't his fault, you know. And uh, I, you know, it was a big loss, man, because I, I wanted to see how far he was going to go. I think go. he would have gone. He would have been crazy. crazy. He'd have been crazy. You know, um, it's unfortunate, but uh, he was one of the he was one of the dope dudes, definitely. Yeah. And you met Big and Tupac, correct? Absolutely. Matter of fact, you see this? Did you see this? No, but send it to us. I'll show it to you right now. With me and Big right there hugging each other. Fire. Can you send it to send us it too to so us, we can put please. it? Yeah, yes, it's fire. Me and Big hugging each other. That's fire. I never met no, Tupac. I know y'all must have interacted a lot. Yeah, I mean, he immortalized me. Big, a piece of RG, Brucey B, Kid Capri, Free. Funk Man. Yeah, he mm-hmm. immortalized me. So, but, you know, Big was cool, man. Solid dude, man. Like, 
I remember I did a show with him in Detroit. And uh, matter of fact, it was me, and him, the and Ross Keller. Was outside? Huh? The players was outside? Nah, he, it, was, it, it was a little different. It okay. was a little different. He was in the right. back. Okay. In the backstage. And uh, he had a car. The way, they, the way they set it up, it was a car that drives to the, to the, uh, to the dressing room. So I went back there. I seen him. It was like, yo, big, what's up? It was like, I got some music that you might want to hear, whatever. He was like, you got some shit? That was like, you got some shit? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got some shit. He went on stage. When he went on stage, I remember hearing this roar. It was like, <sighs> it was like, I never heard a roar like that from a crowd. He was that big, man. When that dude hit the stage, it was mango time. So it was unfortunate we lost him as long as early as we did. But, you know, he was so powerful, his legacy gonna live forever. How about Tupac? We, we, I never Same met thing. Tupac. I know, I know Pac. I, every time I seen Pac, I remember one time I, being, I was in LA, I was at Crenshaw. I was at some restaurant, I was like three o'clock in the morning, I went to some restaurant with, with uh, my people. And Pac was sitting in the restaurant with some dude, nobody else in the restaurant. And I hugged him, and he had a bulletproof vest on. Then I seen him in New York, at this seminar they, they had at the, it was, I forgot the name of the seminar, but it was at the New York Hilton Hotel. And I seen him then, hugged him then. He had a bulletproof vest on. Every time I seen him, I seen him on 125th Street one time, me and Biz was together. We took this picture, all of us. Hugged him, he had a bulletproof vest on. It was like he was kind of like, knew that he was gonna die. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, that was unfortunate too, man, because you know, he, if I think, I think if he would have been here, he probably would have started a school or something. Nah, it would have been. He'd have been yeah. somewhere over there. If like, both of them would have been around, both I could of them. imagine yeah. what they would have done together. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, definitely. That was a big loss in hip hop, for sure. How about Prince? Does Kick Capri have a Prince story? Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yo, we Prince, Prince came, stories. Up, Prince came okay, to a party I did. I'm like, yo, oh, watch this. Got a you got a Let me get a shot ready. Yeah, I'm getting a shot ready, too. Hold Prince on. came to. The key. I did a party downtown in Manhattan called the Key to say Club. The skate key. I'm about to say if Prince came to Skate I'm, I'm sorry, not the Key Club, the Sky Club. Sky Club. Yeah. And Prince comes in. Was he flowing? Watch this. He sits <laughs> with me. <laughs> he Almost sits flowing. in the booth with me for two hours. Wow. I put another DJ on the play. Me and Prince, you will forget that he will have his ass out. Yes, I'm about to say, what's his ass out? Super, super, super cool. Like, you totally forget he he's Prince. Like, solid and nice with the basketball. Crazy with the ball. Super crazy with the ball. Don't even play yourself. Like a real NBA motherfucker. Like, really nice like that. <laughs> Yo, he sat there with me for two hours, bro, and we just talked about all kind of shit. Then he had me come to his club where he did Purple Ray that. The club he had in Minneapolis. I did it twice for him. Did that joint. When I tell you, man, you totally forget he's Prince. Like I, I'm talking. He had, he had these pigtails in his hair, like these, like these big ass braids in his hair. Sitting in the club, we sat there for two hours, and I did a little set where I played all his shit back to back. Played the shit back to back, and he was like, "Yo, I never heard a DJ play my shit like that." Uh. And this is how he was talking. Uh. Like, some of the dudes that you see that we grew up on on television right. and we looked at, we look at them in a certain way. But they ain't really real people. They just people like us. They don't different. You know right. what I'm saying? Like Ronald Wisely. Right. I'm sitting here, <laughs> me and Ronald Wisely sitting together one time. We did a, a boat ride. Uh, this, this, uh, this, this, this cruise for seven days. Me, Ronald Wisely, Gat Bad, Cade. Dougie Fred, like a whole bunch of people, new edition, a whole yeah. bunch of people. And I said, I said, Al Green was on stage, right? He had Crazy. this white dope suit on with this ruffle shirt, you know, and me and Ronald Wisely sitting next to each other. My shot is already loaded. Right. I mean, so I said, to, I said to Ron Wisely, I said, yo, you like Al Green? He was like, yeah, I like Al Green. What the fuck he got on? <laughs> yo, he was shitting on his clothes. And he's saying this while he got a chain on. Jeans on, leather jacket, hat backwards, baseball cap, sitting there like me. That's what I'm saying. Like we, we see people a certain kind of way, uh, but they be different. Whitney right. Houston. Yeah. Let's hit up with some Whitney Houston. Shout out to Whitney Houston. We see the certain kind of way. It was a different way. Not that that knocks a dab or anything like that right, or right. anything like that. But you know, people 
People are people. We are people. We are no better than nobody else. Just right. because you have a startup job or you're an entertainer, it doesn't make you better than anybody else. You just have a different job. That's why when people embody this, I hate it. I said this on one of my records, a new record I did. I hate a little rapper that walks around like a little rapper all day. Mm. Motherfucker don't know how to turn it off. I'm not kicking pre when I wake up. I'm David Love. Mm. And then I'm kicking pre when I need to turn it on. That's an ill DJ name, though, too, David Love. Many people said to me, yo, kid, why you ain't call yourself D Love, right. DJ D Love? Because at the time, you made up a name. Right. Grandmaster Flash wasn't going to call himself Joseph, Joseph Sadler. Right. You see what I'm saying? You made up a name to be, to be bigger. So that's what it was. But yeah, that was, I could have been D Love yeah, or yeah, whatever, D-Love. you know what I'm saying? That, that's not but. Hard. That's how I am. I'm not that. I'm not kicking pre when I wake up and I'm that all day. I don't. I, I know how to turn it off, and I turn it on when it need to be. But there's some dudes that embody this shit all day, and they think that they're doing people a favor. You're not doing nobody a favor. People are doing you a favor, and when they cut the lights off, you're gonna really see. When you are too busy to sign an autograph for somebody, all of a sudden you too busy to do, busy to do a drop for a DJ or anybody that needs a drop. You would have you would have loved for people to ask you for that before you when got on. Knew you, right. So right. now you on, you too busy for that? You right. feel like you too big for that? You, you ain't see, shit. You seen you tell DJs do that. that before? Be too big and then and then fall off? Say it again? You seen DJs do that before? Like, I see DJs, entertainers, and people that's just business be very unhumble. Right. First they humble, right. they get on. They're very unhumble, and then they fall off, Life and they're more humble than it was before right. they was before they started. Right. I've seen it over and over again because people come and go. You know, the business come and go. That's why you got You have to understand that there's always somebody that's more talented to you. Listen, Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan, right. but you don't think there was a Michael Jordan somewhere else in the yeah. world that was nice that nobody knew about? Mm-hmm. He just didn't have the accolades. He didn't have the, that was known. There's always going to be somebody that's good or better than you. That's why you have to appreciate the position you're in. People will break their arm to be in a position me, yourself, and yourself is in right now. Right. You know how many entertainers that y'all haven't called yet that would love to be in this seat to tell yep. their story of Dream Champs? You see what I'm saying? That's that's a that's a privilege. Right. How do you how do you how do you knock that? How do you act like that's not a good, a great thing for yourself. And how do you treat people less than because you're in that position? You was not busy before, but now you're too busy to speak right. to people and sign autographs. And you know, it, it goes hand in hand. This is a business that we in. And in order for you to remain and stay as long as I have, I've been in this business hot thirty years, never had no downtime. You know, what I'm saying I'm a testament of it. In order to stay like that, you have to treat people fairly. You're not better than nobody. You just have a different job. That's all. And people have to understand that. Yeah, treat everybody with the same respect. That's it. Demand it and give it. That's it. Right. No more, no, no, no less. And, 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 and that's what makes you stay. That's what makes people respect you. And even if you fell off, people that was there when you was on will always have your back. They will always make sure they got you because right. they seen how you treated people all the way up. You know, it's not made for everybody to last long. Right. You know what I'm saying? I would, Nobody I, will ever last a distance. Right. Ups and downs. And everything has always. an ending. Right. Everything has an ending. But if you're able to stay as long as you have, know that that's a blessing. Know that there's somebody that wasn't able to do that, and you was. So right. with that being said, treat it fairly. Treat it with respect. Don't, don't, you know, certain things I just see people do. I'll be looking on the net. I'll be looking at shit like, yeah, you see, you don't, he don't look like he looks stupid. You don't know that you're playing yourself. You don't look... You, come on, B. It's just certain shit you gotta... If you wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror, you, you gotta know how you look. You look... You know, so you gotta carry yourself a certain way. And, and that's just... I just see stuff that was like, damn. But, you know, you can't... You can't. You ain't responsible for how everybody move. You ever got caught on the East, West... Coast, West Coast shit? In the middle of the East Coast, West Coast beef. Let's keep in mind. When the Suge thing happened... On the source, I was the announcer. Oh, wow. I was announcer on the television. Wow. So I'm sitting in the fifth row when it happened. The energy in the room felt like anything was going to happen at any time. Mm-hmm. When Outcast came out and they got booed, it wasn't because Outcast wasn't good. It was the bad thing that was going on at the moment. In the middle of the East Coast, West Coast beef, I was going back and forth to California out there like it was nothing. Like, I never had an issue. I was doing parties 
with Crips and Bloods and Mexican gays. And I did one party with Crips and Bloods and Mexican gays at this warehouse. It looked like some shit was going to jump off at any time. <laughs> but because of me keeping them occupied so much, Yo, that, sounds, US, that sounds amazing, though. Yeah. In a warehouse, Crips, Bloods, and the Mexicans. Yeah, it was and crazy. And Kid Capri spinning. Right. right. In the middle of Huntington Beach, California. And, you know, beefs happen in parties when people are not occupied, when people are standing there and they grill each other. Right. They got a chance to look at each other. You just look at that. All that. If you keep the people occupied, you're making people feel good, you can step on somebody's foot. They'll be like, oh, they can worry about it. Right. But if they're standing there, they have a chance to get into shit. I fortunately don't have problems at my parties. I don't have shootouts. I don't have gunfights. I don't have no kind of fights at my joint. Everybody is always having a good time, no matter where I'm at. And the one thing I'm very proud of is if they put a phone up, they put it up to, to see me for a minute, and that phone is down. They're having a good time. It's not standing on the phone looking cute in the phone. I, who started that shit? Who started this shit? Yeah, he's an asshole. Who started this in the mirror looking cute? That narcissistic shit, I just don't get it. And I'm going to say this to the chicks. I'm going to say this to the chicks. If you bad already, you don't need that attention. Right. Mm. You don't need to put extra shit on it. You bad already. Right. right. Let us let us push you up. You ain't gotta push yourself up. Throw the picture up there. We see it. That's it. All that extra looking in the mirror, narcissistic shit. It, it looks stupid to me. I'm gonna be very honest with you. Mm. That was a jump off. You know, let me yeah. go back on. Back <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, no, back. no, 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 no. And you've been knocking down shit for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he finish the thought? <laughs> yeah, right. Did you finish the thought about? In the midst of the East Coast West Coast stuff, did you oh, finish yeah. that? Oh, so thought? so like yeah. in, the, in the middle of the East Coast West Coast beef, I'm going you back was and able forth. To still go to the West. Coast. Still go. Probably the only cheating. one. Let me just tell you something. Straight up, Def Jam. I it, it was so bad at one point, and I think this is after I got. Well, I was doing something with Def Jam, and as soon as I landed in LA, they had security for me. Like they had like three like. That's how bad it was. Like you couldn't I, even I, tell them. I'm gonna tell you pass. why I think why I was when, so. When you said you was doing it in the West Coast, this is before Big Pass or after Big Pass? This is during the middle of, of the, the beef. actual beef. Okay, okay. This is in the middle of the beef, okay. and I think the reason why I was so I didn't catch any issues or any problems because I was always supporting the West Coast. Right. I was the first to play. Let me let me go here. I was the first to play Ghetto Boys by playing tricks on me. Wow. On radio. Wow. That's why the very first That's award that I ever got was from Rap -a -Lot? the Ghetto Boys. Wow. Was the Bob Plays of Tricks of Me. That was my wow. first award before any award I won because I made that hot, that wow. that hot in New York. Same thing with Outcast. I made Southern Cal uh, playlist of Cadillac music hot in New York before I played it on radio before anybody played it. Wow. They was never playing these records. You know what I'm saying? So I, I built up in, in with West Coast. I was playing NWA. And like, I'm not the reason for it blowing up in New York. Right. But I was so indulged in being in the West Coast parties and doing parties out there. Def Comedy Jam was out there. It was just going crazy. It was just really big. So I caught a lot of respect in the West Coast because of the work I was putting there before the beef happened. Right. You see what I'm saying? So when the beef happened... They, I never had that issue. I would be in the worst, deadliest places mm. and everything would work out good because I respect everybody. Mm. I respect everybody. It doesn't matter where you come from or where you at. You know, nobody's better than nobody. Yeah, we started hip-hop. We was the first ones. We, right. we were, you know, but I told Cool Herc, you know, Herc, what do you think? It, it Herc, I told Herc, what do you think? It's going to stay in the blocks? It's never going to just stay in the blocks. It's so big, it's going to go... Out the world, like, and that's what it is. International, yeah. And that's it. So you have to treat everybody with the same amount of respect. But okay, I asked this to other people on the show, and from your viewpoint, did you think that the beef was East Coast versus West Coast? No, or it, was it crew versus crew? It was. It was one person against one person, and because this, these two people had so much of influence on both coasts, the coast got involved. Too many people on each side got involved. It was just the right, coast guy. Right. It wasn't a coast against coast. It was I got my I got Big's back. Right. I got Pops back. Now what? So it was that. It was not. It wasn't a thing where East Coast hated 
the West Coast. We of course not. And the West Coast hated. It wasn't that. It was Pac is repping the East, is repping the West. All right, well, I got his back. Period. That's right. it. And that's loyalty. That's what loyalty is. You got somebody's back that represents you. Right. Can't be mad at that. But where the problem is is that it became deadly. It became deadly. This wasn't supposed to be pocket big diet. This is music, bro. We gonna die for music? This is supposed to be something that bring joy to our life and bring money to our pocket and make bring joy to other body. Everybody else like we take this shit a little too serious. That's why with all this gay shit coming into the, in, in, in the music and all that, that's not for the music, bro. Right. We watching all these people die, really, bro? Like, this is music. Kids. It's kids. Yeah. They don't see their future. A lot of people feel like they're not going to live past 25. They feel like they're going to live past a certain time. So they do certain shit to try to get as much in before they go. Right. For what they think. You know what I'm saying? But it's not like that, man. You know, and um, got a long life to live, a lot of shit to do. Let me fill your cup up, you know what I mean? Absolutely. That black excellence. You know Absolutely. You know what I mean? God damn it. <laughs> Holy moly, Glock. I'm kind of holding myself good, oh, too. I, got, I, I, got, mad, I, my... I have mad shots. Yeah, I, got, I have I got mad shots. Shot. I got another shot. There you go. Hold on, hold on. And I'm, I'm holding myself pretty good here. Mm. I don't drink. Keep in mind. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of you. Don't, don't drink. Take you it. don't have to go in anymore. <laughs> let's take it to them track master days. Now, you were you down with track masters as a producer? No. What happened was I was signed to Columbia. Okay. Not the track master. You weren't signed to track master. I wasn't signed to track master. I was signed to Columbia. Because they had a deal with Columbia. Columbia, right. They didn't have a deal yet when I oh, got wow. there. So I, was there to, I was signed to Columbia, and I did a first album. The A&R at that time lost my dat tape to the album. The master dat? The master wow. dat. So I told them, fuck y'all. Oh I'm not doing no album. You lose my fucking dat, really? Right. So for five years, I was signed to Columbia. I was already hot sizzling doing what I'm doing. I didn't need no right. record. So for five years, they held, I was there and didn't do nothing. They just held me sign. So then one day they called me and said, yo, we just put track masters with Columbia. We want to put track masters with you to do your album. Being that I knew Tone and Polk, I was like, you know, I know them, like, right, cool. And we ended up doing the album. I produced all the shit track masters that they did. Uh, they did uh, the Foxy Brown record with the locks, and they did the remix to the Unity record, everything else I did. Mm. Norby came and did the album that day. Norby came, Pun. It was crazy. Pun came to the studio. I was recording the Lost Boys. And I took the Lost Boys out of the studio and I put Pun in. Pun came there with his wife and his kids. He pulled a chair up, sat in the chair, did one verse, did one ad lib, and was out the booth for 15 minutes. He had all his people, he had his wife and his kids sitting around him while he was doing this verse. He was out the booth. That's the record you meet him and the me and him's on. I robbed on that record. And um, and that's how that happened. That's it. Fucking fantastic. You know, it was crazy. crazy. What's crazy is that that story vibes with Remy Ma's recollection and your recollection of Pun having his family around him. Yeah. Yeah, Pun was no joke when it came to that. Yeah, Pun was serious. So, so what's your favorite thing right now? Is it making the music or performing the music or playing the music? Yours is a three-part question. Making the music, performing the music, or playing the I music. I love it all, man. I love it all. pick one. If, if, if I mean, if, I, said, if I could pick one, play the music. But I like, I love making the music. I love, you know, writing. I love being able to, to see people dancing to my shit. If I, if I play it in the club or if somebody played it in the car. If, if, just like I walked in here, y'all was playing the album in here. That makes me feel like, damn, kid, you really did good. You did your shit. But well, let me ask you why you say playing the music. Because but remember, when he plays the music, he also performs it. Right, right. So that's the difference with him. There's been times like I, I've been having shows in like Poland or some shit like that. Right. Or, you know, Dusseldorf, Germany or something. And I would go there at 6 o'clock. You know, even though the doors open at 9, this is the regular shit like out here. And I'll go there at 6 o'clock and see people there. Right. I'm like, I'm going to rock this motherfucker. All right, you're going to tear this shit down. Sure. So... Is it like that when you, when you, when you DJ and when you sitting there and you it, do you walk in the club and, and, and do you do you anticipate? when I'm in my backstage? Okay. When I'm in my dressing room, uh -huh. my thing is, Jim, how's the crowd look? He'll come back. It's like this, like that. If you put any crowd in front of me, watch this. Here's a, here's the deal. The same people that the fifty thousand that I might be in front of, if fifty people came. They're gonna get the same energy as the fifty thousand. It's no different. 
You see what I'm saying? Especially if the 50 is going like this. It's no different. Right. The energy is always going to be what it's going to be. Right. Right? But there's even fur- it goes even further than that. A promoter may call me and do everything that I expect him to do on my, on my rider. Right? And there's something like rain happens where only 50 people may come. Right? I'll tell that promoter, yo, go set up something, I'm going to come do it for free. Right. Set up another joint. I'm going to come do it for free. Where another artist will say, yo, it's still, uh, act the guard, ain't got to do it with me, give my money, I'm out. Pretty much. That promoter will say, yo, kid got me when I'm, when I'm down, kid ain't going to kick me further, you're going to make sure I'm good. Right. So now he has me come back six more times that year. It's fine. Right. You're you investing know yourself in that way. Yeah, because things can happen. You don't right. want to just take money for promoters, you want to make sure that they're good. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, sometimes we just get into our own shit. Some right. promoters, because there's some janky promoters out there. Yeah, well, some janky, but you, don't, you shouldn't be dealing with janky promoters. That's true. Right. It's up to you to pick and choose who you want to work your with. price should separate you from any janky promoters. Exactly. Yes. And not only that, you need to know your worth, and that promoter needs no, to know your worth. No, but there's some scammers out here, though, kid. There are. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some and you're going to run into them, but then you stop yeah. after that point. You, yeah. you, you identify some niggas paying you big money and that's Bitcoin. It. That's it. And like, see, they it. lose. They I, lose. I, I got to take this shit, but I know he's a slime It's the wrong thing <laughs> to shit on somebody that you know that's going to bring the money, always do great, great business, right. always does his job. It's the wrong thing because people think short term. Right. I always thought long term. Right. That's why I was able to stay 30 something years heavy, no downtime, because I think long term. I don't think right. the short. So a lot of times you think short, you kill yourself, and a lot of promoters do that. They, they want to get the quick money and, and, and cut corners and do all this dumb shit. If you're not ready to be a promoter, don't be one. It's as simple as that. Now, promoter is very hard. That's, yeah. that's a it's a hard, hard business. Job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you're not ready for it, don't right. do it. That's why I never did it. Like I don't go and promote myself around the country. because they popular and they got clout in the city that they could just promote a party. And the crazy shit is, your homies is not enough. Because you it's think you, you're going to invite your homies and your homies I'm going to tell you the funny shit. Okay. When the promoters try to be bigger than the artists on the flyer, yeah. why are you putting yourself big on the flyer? And they do yeah. that. Why are you making yourself... Like, a real promoter, I said this on the on Ebo show, a real promoter does real business. He puts his name small on there, he's a production, and he makes the flyer the way it's supposed to be. Now, it's about you, and everybody else is belittling you. Right. What do you try to do? You want to be a star, you're not talented, and this is where you're, this is how you get your, your attention? Like, that's not, that's not the way business is. I done joints with Lee. He wants to shine. How is I just joined with Lee, yeah, with Mr. Yeah. Lee. He's, 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 I heard he's, he's a tap dancing official. before you come <laughs> on. <laughs> official. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you have certain promoters that really want to do the business, and you have certain promoters that want to be in it for the raw reasons, just like you have entertainers that want to be right. in it for the raw reasons. Right. They want to be with the bitches. They want to be cute. They, I'm not going to say bitches, women. I don't really call people women bitches. But right. They, um, they want to be with, with the cute shit. They, they see... But they don't see the hard work that goes into it. Right, right. And that's where you test who's who. That's when you see who's who. If they really to sustain, if they able to sustain what they've been doing for a certain long time, a certain amount of time, and, and be comfortable with it, and be willing to deal with the downfalls as well as the ups. You know, it's, it, this business is a cutthroat business. A lot of people are shitty in this business. Yes, they are. You know what I'm saying? They, they you know. That's why I don't ask nobody for nothing. Listen to my album. I could have asked anybody to be on my album. I could have asked any man. They would have heard a quarter of my album and say, yeah, kid. Hell yeah. Because that's one of the very first things is when they see DJ, DJ, and then Kick Capri. But DJ, they always think, oh, it's going to be features. It's going to be a DJ It's going to be a feature album. thing like my little soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a joint compilation. Yeah. No, this is yeah. serious. Yeah. This is serious. And it makes rappers that have been doing this for a long year say, yeah, this nigga kid's serious. It's, mm. not, it's not no joke. It's not no play. And I'm not. Nah, My it, beats are crazy. It's just crazy. The bars is crazy. Everything mm. is crazy. I ain't asked no help. I asked for my daughter, Lavelle, the RB artist, yep. and Mr. Ray, uh, Mr. Lex, the reggae artist, to be on it. And that's it. Mm. And Let's 19 joints. 19 joints. And you joint real quick. I gotta go one more time. Yeah, I'm pretty good. All right, cool.
So we've conquered it all. We've done, we've conquered Def Comedy Jam. We've done, you know, movies, TV shows. We've, you know, scored, worked with Madonna. Jay-Z. Jay-Z, Met Prince. Everybody, 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 everybody. Everybody, what the fuck could be next for you? Well, I'm always trying to create opportunities for other people. So I did this album. Hopefully, you know, first of all, let me say this. I don't have no machine behind me. I'm put, I, I'm independent. I put it out myself. I'm depending on the music being as good enough to, to carry. We're doing what we do to make it happen. But, you know, I, like I said, I ain't asked no artists to be on this. So it's just this thing I just wanted, I just felt like doing. But <clears throat> at the same time, I have other people that I'm working with and, and, and trying to uh, create opportunities for them. And that's been that's always been my thing. So, with that being said, sucker free the, and the, the the real estate, the new albums I got coming, the new stuff. I'm always gonna keep moving and keep going. I don't know what I'm gonna end up with later, because I'm nowhere near done. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like some people be in this business ten years and they done. I've been here thirty something years and moving, and, and, mm. and my ear is still as sharp as it ever been. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can hear it in the love album. So. It, I'm just going to keep doing what I do and, and, and creating and, and just keep creating opportunities and just doing things and, and making sure that that they know that I'm not just one thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just one thing. I'm a triple threat. And, and at the end of the day, that's what it's about, being able to um, not let nobody stop you from just being what you want to be. You do what you want to do. You know, and um, it's been fortunate for me. I got God in my life. I, I, respect, I respect my faith and... I appreciate the spirit, and that's first. That that's what brings everything to to home. Because without that, none of this is possible. So that's why I look at first, and then everything else. So I'm just gonna keep it going. And, and, and what the next thing is, who knows? I mean, right now I have the album out, so the movie is coming and all this other stuff. But right now, I just want people to hear this album. I want people to listen to it from the beginning to end and feel it and understand that. It's not just a record that got two records on it. A lot of times we get caught up in we're gonna have our one nah, or two incredible. records help us surprise, help us uh, carry us. Nah, we, we got a body of work here. So, love album is something that y'all should hear. Well, just so you know, hold you're on, in really, my movie. Really quick, what what would be your advice to someone just getting started in this industry in terms of longevity? Because not everybody's gonna have the longevity. Nobody, I don't. There's not many people that can say they have the longevity you have. You gotta be a, you gotta be a leader. Be a leader. Don't be a follower. Mm. Don't be a trend. A, a trendy dude. Set the trend. Mm. Don't be for the time. Be timeless. Mm. You know. And even when if you when you be in a, in a business as long as I have, you're gonna have some downtime too. It's gonna be some times where things look like it's getting a little shaky. The testament is how you keep it going. It's the testament is how you bounce back and keep moving. You gotta keep in mind, my influence made DJs talk on the mic. My influence made DJs play records quick, uh, look a certain way instead of you just looking like somebody behind somebody yeah. looking homely. Mm. Now you look like a star. Mm. Kick Capri did that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Let's not let's not get it twisted in no kind of way. People would do things and make it started, make you think it started with them. Mm. Right. Right? I'm not here to sit, to, to put in your face what I've did and all that. I'm here to show you what the real is. But at the same time, would the DJ business have been the way it been had I not done what I did? Mm. You got to question that. Would there be a Khaled? Would there be a clue? Would there be these different people that done what they did after the fact had I not done what I did with the with the business? You know, shout out to all of them. They all did great. But it started with me saying, let me sit on that street corner and sell these mixtapes no matter how anybody look at me. Right. No matter how anybody feel. I had girls driving by in cars, fly chicks, laughing at me because I'm sitting on the street corner selling tapes like I'm soliciting. I put 14 gold chains on my neck just to look like I'm doing good. Straight up. Because you're doing good, but they don't think you're doing good. They you don't think show. I'm doing good because I'm, I'm soliciting. You got to actually show you doing good. I got to show yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah. So I throw the 14 Jones James. I sit a certain way, you know, and I, I'm thorough. So niggas, dudes ain't going to try me. Like, I, you know, and they all know how I play. So that was another thing. But more than that, you know, chicks see, see that 
It was like it was like a game, like it was funny. All right, y'all go ahead and laugh now. Watch what happened. That following year, I was on television. That following year, I had an album. That following year, I was on the radio. Everything was bang because I took my pride and swallowed it and said, you know what? I'm not too big to sit on the street corner and try to keep it popping. Where a lot of dudes they think they're too big to do certain things. And nah, B. I do it this way and it's going to make me move. And that's what made me do every day. I, from there, I went to Def Comedy Jam, comedians that nobody knew. We took those comedians. I went back to the beginning, took those comedians. We made them big. Bernie mm-hmm. Mac, boom, boom, boom. All these dudes got became big, gave them a platform. Came back to, to the internet. I was sitting on the internet playing on Periscope. I had 30 people on there. You was looking at me saying, yo, this legend got 30 people on this nigga fell off, B. No, my mindset was I'm going to go back to the mixtape sitting on the street corner when nobody knew me. Right. And then I'm going to make it grow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it went because I'm not scared to go back to the beginning. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you stay relevant. You can't relevant. be scared to build again. Not as scared to build again to start over. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you stay relevant when you don't do the same thing all the time. You're able to do other things. That's why doing this album, producing it and writing it, come on, as good as it is, like, we can't front on it. You can say no, whatever you want. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, you cannot say that Love album is not... No, we were listening not, to it. Me and Beats in the Hood over here. There's no way you can't say dope. the album is hot. So at the end of the day, when you listen to it, you know I stay in it. So that's what it's about, man. Just uh, taking care of your customers and just loving what you do, man. You know? Damn, I feel like that's... I was like, Holy moly, guacamole. You got anything else? Nah, let's go, man. I feel like this is it. Let me fill your champagne glass up, though. Come on. Let's, let's cheers to celebrate a legend, you, man. motherfucker. Cheers to a legend. You inspired oh. all of us, brother. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Thank no, you, no, honestly, honestly, you, honestly right, this, 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 this is the last. I don't know if this is a uh, question. It might be more of a statement. Kicker pre tapes. And I know I've said this to you. Maybe off the record. And maybe that's kind of corny because I should have said this to you on the record. At one point, I used to wake up and get a kick of pre tape mm-hmm. as if that was me getting fly. Somebody like, said that to me. Like that was a part of my outfit. Like, like, I can't outfit, be right. fly right. and then not have right. a, a kick of pre tape to go with it. Right. <laughs> I know this shit just makes sense to nobody that's young. No, you're right, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Like, I had to have volume number 17. Right, you had to be like... like if, I, if I had the book Jackson's on, or I had the book Jackson's on, yeah, yeah, you had to and you had to. I didn't have a tape to go with it, like, yeah. you were kind of like... Because it's like, like... And we didn't have cars back then. So, like I said earlier, we would do OJs, the National Cabs, the Experience Cabs in Queensbridge, and... What we would do is we would get in and we fly, but you gotta have volume seventeen. Mm. You gotta have you gotta, you gotta have, have a certain tape to make you, you feel a certain have, way. And and, and, and and my earliest beautifulest memory of going up towns has always been King of Pre tapes. And I just want you to know, like, if you listen to the record I did with Jay Z, that the one I won the Grammy for, it's like that. Uh-huh. Right. Do that if you listen that. to it, do that in there. if you <laughs> listen, to it, but if you listen, like if you listen, it's like that. That's what I was doing. Mixtape shit on the album record. Right. Put your hands up, right. and my, you know, what I'm it's kick a pre or Jay Z. It's it's, right. it's it was the same. It was a a mixtape party feel. Right. That's what I was on at the time. But that record wasn't supposed to be in that beat. Mm. When I did the record with Jay, it was a different beat. Mm. It was something different. And we walking past. He was walking past the studio. If the loop that I had that we did, I had that record for like five years. I brought, right. brought it in New Orleans, but I never could get it to loop straight in the in the machine. So I had it looped on the tape just to listen to it. He was walking past the, st- the studio. He heard me playing it in the studio. He was like, "Yo, what's that?" I said, "It was some shit that I just had looped." He was like, "Yo, we need to do that." Right. And that's and five years I had this record. I couldn't get it fixed. In five minutes after he said I had that shit finished, wow. right. And I think this is the last shot there. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. But, but I, want to, I want to say something real okay. quick. And I'm going to say this, reiterating the last time you were here, but in case someone didn't watch the episode, in case you don't remember, I've always said that your, your career inspired me. Mm. Your tapes, what inspired me to make mixtapes. Mm. 
I made my chops making mixtapes. Mm. If I didn't make mixtapes, I wouldn't be here right now. Mm. And you on Def Comedy Jam inspired the fuck out of me to the point where Def Comedy Jam came to Miami at James L. Knight Center. Yes, we did. And <laughs> everybody after the show, the comedians and Kid Capri stood out for everybody to meet. I stood in line to meet Kid Capri. So I want to thank you, brother, and I want to tell you that I know it's not just me. You inspired so many motherfucking people out there. Thank so you, Thank man. you for that. Fuck up. I appreciate it. I need mean, that. Yeah, you fucking eating all this cab money and gas money I spent on your ass. Yeah, let's take this last shot. Let's take this last shot. You can take another one. Let's take this one. A little one. Let's take a little one. Take it. You got to do it. Yeah, this is it, man. Kick, kid. Man, thank you so much, man, for being who you are, man. A legend of legends. I love y'all, man. Thank y'all for what y'all do, man. This is your platform always. Salute. Salute.